burn your notes. They don't matter. But you just told us to look at them. Burn them. That's why I told you to look at them. So that if you burn them, you would already know what's on them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Eldritch of Eidos, Episode 7, The Big One. That's the name of this episode. It's called The Big One. All right. <laughs> I'm assuming Annalisa has added. Thank you. All right. As you all watch there as the Rochi Beetle Cavalry, a phrase I never thought my tongue would utter, skitter across the defenses of the second way station. Um, their bug, the kind of pincers or the feet of the bugs, finding purchase in cracks and crags of the mountainside of the way station. Um, the... They, the swordsmen kind of stand there, hands on their the hilts of their blades, watching these these people ride past. Seeing them from up close, they look basically human, like a little taller, a little thinner, but not like that different. Their skin looks tough. They have kind of their teeth are there. Are maybe a few more incisors there than a normal person, and they all wear their hair like in long kind of ponytails basically um all none of it's cut and they all have those war bows um i love my sister just playing piano with zero tune ability right above my head okay um <clears throat> so the uh as they're like moving by sonya's standing there watching them past Bruno's with you guys, um, also looking quite tense. Um, but they're kind of moving up to the front of you guys. The second prelate in her strange armor dismounts from her beetle, a few inches taller than Bruno as well. And um, she looks down on all of you. It was a wise decision that was made here. Many more could have died because of your poor choices. Your descendants will be proud of what you have done today. Thanks, mate. One moment. I need to take this thing off my mic. It's messing with my, my head. This may be unpleasant for the ears, so I apologize. Actually, I'm going to... The world just happened. Hmm. Uh-huh. Can you hear me? Fantastic. I'm back. Now, we must speak of terms of surrender, but I believe I have noticed there is a force incoming from the third way station. They are coming to attack us. Would you have any information to tell me about this group of assailants? Well, well might actually why don't you take it away now? Oh, okay. Uh I've I informed you they have a few of them will have thunder weapons. Uh, they will attack at night under the cover of darkness. Every torch will go out. And they kill as many of us as they can and this, leave few to escape. This good information subject. Now is there we will prepare defenses fight with thunder weapons we have heard of these but I believe you thought they were only myths but if your intelligence is correct then tonight we will fight with myths will you provide any assistance to our warriors or are well, you have the any against here. these assailants well uh, Bruno here uh, leads the swordsman I'm sure he can inform you about their capabilities Bruno looks not very pleased with the situation, but is uh, following Sonya's lead, clearly. Uh, my swordsmen will be here fighting alongside your warriors. These assailants have taken the way station and crippled the expanse highways. Your expanse highways. Bruno grits his teeth. Correct. We won't let them take this way station. And I'll admit, some help wouldn't be... Uh, wouldn't be unappreciated. No, it would not. No. We have some information coming. 
from the um, console about a group of people who have arrived here recently. None of you are to leave this way station, although I suppose you cannot, until that messenger arrives with more accurate descriptions of who we are looking for. Please prevent anyone from trying to escape or some very uh, criminal punishments will be applied from the Ketan Empire. Is that clear to all of you? Right, mate. Sounds good. Sounds very good. Yes, sir. I am a woman. Yes, ma'am. Very yeah, mate. Um, the second prelate, like, stalks off to look at the defenses and look around the walls. Um, Bruno looks at you all and Sonya kind of glaringly, but moves off behind them. Um, he is not, like, convinced with this. This is, from his perspective, a temporary, a temporary thing. Um... The uh, two of the Katon warriors like dismount and move next to Sanya. We have been appointed by the prelate as your bodyguards. We are not to leave your side. Well, I uh, suppose I should thank you for protecting me. And I don't suppose this is a choice. You suppose correctly. Ah, uh, well, and she addresses you three. Um, plus Mimsy, plus... Uh, Chuck, which I guess he doesn't met yet. So Mimsy, Ashton, uh, Nimue, and Manka. I um I must attend to my duties. If you need me, I will be in the uh, in the healer's mansion. Good day to you all. May the goddess guide you. And she walks off, looking she... worried. Well, this is going well. I do say uh... this is quite irregular. I mean, uh, it's all part of the plan. Don't worry. Hmm. I'm not convinced. So uh, what, what is uh, our plan? What are we? What are we doing? What is our? What is our goal right now? Surely we must get out of here. Well, we're following your lead, my lord. I do suppose I am in charge. Hmm. What are our options? Ashton, what have you found out? Perhaps the criminal underworld can help us here. Uh, Disgusting, though all you criminals are. Mimsy's hungry. You're a... Treasure chest, you mean. Mimsy growls. Yeah. We're gonna go for a walk. <laughs> ah, do, 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 do have a lovely time. He looks quite nervous. Is there any particular place you're walking, Ashton? Um, I guess towards the wall, just to like check out these new people. These new bug boys. Yeah. All right, gotcha. Um, um, Nimue. As Ashton is walking away, you feel like an arc of pain, like from your hand up your arm, like to your heart, like like almost almost it's the same feeling you got when you accidentally touched Mankar's fishing pole, um, when it was like a little charged up and accidentally got a little bit electrocuted. Um, yeah. it's this sharp, like burning, quick feeling. And, um, Mankar, as you're looking at Nimue, you saw, like, a line of magic move, like, breaking apart Nimue's skin, like, from her, from the ring up to her heart. Um, but as the magic, like, broke the skin, the skin healed behind it. Right, like mate. Like, someone used uh, a letter opener yeah. on Nimue, but healed it afterwards. I right, mate, you felt that. <laughs> Nimue in pain. Just the bits. Hmm. Yeah, well, that doesn't look right, man. No, I might have to uh, talk to somebody glaring immensely at the ring. You could swear well... the ring winked at you. How it could accomplish such a feat, you have no idea. You just get that oh, sense. I... Life finds a way. Life does talk find a way. Talk to whoever you want. But, uh, Here, yeah, I'm, I might uh, 
happening anymore. Yeah, I might head off to a bit more of a private location to uh, meditate on something. And Nimue kind of heads back to her, like, quarters to talk to the ring. Um, You're heading back there. So, main car, um, as you watch Nimue and Ashton leave, uh, Adelton decides, I I think I'm going to go on a little walk myself, see a bit of the the fences and the city. Um, And he he walks off. Um, You get a a tap on the shoulder. All right, mate. How's it going? Ori, it's about time I was about to start looking for you. Ah, well, it's wonderful to see all that. Um, he appears in front of you. Ah, nice jet pack. Where'd you get that beauty? Oh, uh, you know, I ran across it. No. I thought you'd been watching me, mate. Ah, I split off from you back after way station one. I, uh, was trying, if you recall, you're all my investment. I still have to get that ring back to my sect. And, um, for your... Yeah, mate, well, I don't know if you'd want it anymore. It's starting to do some real crazy uh, well, shenanigans. That, that's why I want it even more, so it doesn't do crazy shenanigans. I think the worst thing is we might have an idea of what this thing can do, maybe. There's a um safe house from my sect near here, which is good because we're about to have one hell of a fight. All these bug people who had barely got past their patrols on the way in, they, um... There's one mother of a force coming down on you. Of what, mate? The Reeve. Kandar. Uh, I should have suspected. How the hell did he get all the way over there, though? I have a theory. That's a little Reeve trick that they used to use back in the Empire days. Reeves can travel incredibly quickly through one very interesting method. By killing themselves and have their temple resurrect them anywhere else they want to. Theoretically, again, we don't know entirely how Kandar does resurrect himself without the ritual. He could just kill himself and resurrect himself somewhere else. It might not work like that, but he potentially could have used this death teleportation to get across the expanse. He's raised an army of swordsmen, mercenaries, and more disturbingly, a watchman sect seem to have allied with them, a historical enemy of mine. He took the third yeah, mate, way station, they, uh, and he's They were talking about thunder weapons, so... <laughs> You've seen muskets before, mate. You might have seen some, uh, revolvers. You have no idea what they're bringing down on you. Stuff that makes the Doomsday ship look like an origami hat. Look, the reason he hasn't attacked these last few nights is because he's been building force, building soldiers. He's gonna come on this place down like a thunderbolt, and he's gonna blow it all away. Luckily, he's some of these bug bastards to help you out, but... I don't know if you're going to hold, friend. And I don't know if I want to be here to find out either way. Right, mate. Well, this doesn't seem very ideal no. for us either way, because either A, we stay here. Well, we stay here either way. But no, A, if we stay here. But I might be able to get well, you Well, I'm, I'm saying, in the case that we stay, okay. we're either A, going to get completely blown to bits by this uh, force of pretty much, it sounds like, every large faction in this world of Atos. Or B, uh, we're going to somehow defeat them and then be slaves to a bunch of bugs. And I don't like either of those options. Neither do I. Minecar, I need to speak with you about something. Pendragon trapped. Two hours to grab something. Okay. It wasn't something you could ship? Oh, hey. Hello. I guess he didn't want to pay the money, which I say it costs more than gas, but he wanted to do a trip. Okay, Why are you guys not? ready? Sorry to interrupt, we just got to yeah. go back here right into it. Um, Ashton, you're walking along with Mimsy. We'll have an encounter with you. Um, let's, let's go straight to Ashton. So yeah, you're, you're walking around. Um, one of your thugs that you met that that you're kind of in charge of runs up to you. Oi, uh, Ashton, right? Yeah. Hey, um, I have some information for you that we found. Um, there's a, just letting you know, there's a, um, we saw there's a, a runner. There's a ride out in the distance, like uh, one of the road cheeses riding in at a crazy fast pace. 
and some sort of different type of beetle that's moving faster than the rest of them. Seems like he's got a message for you. Just thought you might want to know. How do you know he's got a message for me? He's oh, not not a message for you. A message for here, but he's ran towards here quite obviously. I also have a question. Do you have a name for us? I mean, if you're forming a gang, which it seems like you are, do you have a name for it? I'm open to suggestions. Oh. Um. Hmm. That's a good question. The Ooh. Colos Caravan. I've got the, the Colos Caravan. Like that. That's pretty Colos good. Crew. <laughs> the Colos Crew. The Colos Crew. crew. I mean, can we beat that? I don't think so. Except crew is spelled with a K. Both Colos and crew are spelled with a K. The Colos and crew. Mortal Kombat style. Fantastic. Okay, well that's it. You both are visited on by an angel that arrives from, like, heaven. I've come to bring you a message. You're totally I, I swing at the angel. <laughs> your totally lit gang should be called the Colos crew. Peace. Peace out. And the angel dabs and then leaves. Um so Well that's a g incredible name. Um yeah, well I'll spread it around, make sure the Colos crew really gets it get you know, gets the program. Do you have anything I'm you want to your handshake too? Oh yeah. <laughs> you have like to figure angel. it out. Okay. Well, I'll be on my way. Uh, just remember, you never know who's going to be in the Carlos crew, so just, you know, ask around. You can always find one of us hiding places. We can give you information or assistance or stuff like that. So just All keep right. an eye out for us. Oh, we should have a gang tattoo. <laughs> it's it's <Yes>. just... <laughs> Gosh, the Colos crew is 1k away from disaster. Um, but I agree. <laughs> it's um your gang sign is like the gang tattoo is K squared. Bam. <laughs> That's good enough for me. <laughs> um bam. Yeah. Look for anyone with that tattoo and then he he waddles off. Okay. Um oh jeez, what am I people doing outside hello oh geez i'm watching a show okay i'm sorry um Nimue, yeah you arrived back at the rooms you were you were requisitioned um shut the door behind you and you are sitting on the edge of your bed just stare at the ring you know if you want to get somebody's attention you don't have to like carve out their skin I, mean, I wasn't trying to get your attention that wasn't really me so sorry Wait. But, and wait, then who was it? I mean, it was me, but I wasn't doing oh, it on okay. purpose. It's okay. like, why do you scratch your ear? Because it's itchy, you know? It's not my fault. But, I mean, yeah, but I mean, scratching you're your ear. wearing me. I was given you. Oh, yeah. I and it was forcibly put on my finger. Oh, uh, you feel and then like was... another one of the same sparks, like, goes up your arm. There's this arc of pain. Sorry about that. There's nothing much I can do. Well, I mean, you're healing it afterwards. I mean, yeah, but that's also kind of automatic, so don't give me too much credit, you know. I don't want you to oh, go through it. too I'm, much pain. I don't want uh, yeah, you to I want to do... go through too much pain. Well, to be fair, I was just thinking you could regrow my arm, but that was me being selfish. I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't really work like that. I'm sorry. Hey. Well. I... Yes? You should probably know about what's happening with me. I mean, why you were giving me... I don't know. I watching you go through all these things. I feel like I should tell you. And um that's that's probably a good idea. I mean, he he gave it to me because and she like just stops speaking. She just freezes as if someone's like grabbed her and just held her there. It's like she cannot move. She cannot like speak. She's just frozen completely. And you just feel a great magical presence like around you. Do not forget oh, great. what you've been tasked to do, Nimue. What you've been tasked to carry. What you bear. What burden you are bringing upon this world. A new order. 
See, when you say it like that, it almost sounds sinister. There's this kind of a rumble of laughter. Oh dear, I didn't come off as sinister, did I? No, no, perfect gentleman. I forgot why I liked you. Or almost forgot. Now go and run along. And don't worry, you can't really make any wrong decisions at this point. It's all uphill from here, as long as you have the right perspective. Hmm. Hmm. All this worrying and running about when you're really just running in place like a rat on a wheel in a cage. Do not worry, little Nimue. You're already at your destination. I want to tell you how to do your job, but you got to work on the pep top. <laughs> Maybe I'm not talking to you. And the presence withdraws. Um, the the ring like gasps and falls over. <sighs> I really yeah, so you don't that. have to tell me. <laughs> the ring. I mean, yeah, the she, ring falls over. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm talking about like her presence in the lake. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like as implied. Um, I hate that. Do you know how rare yeah. it is to find a magical entity stronger than me? It's gotta be one in a million. Ridiculous. Yeah, how do I think I fear every magical entity is stronger well, than me? Well, you're it human, sucks. so you must yeah, be used to it by now. Yeah, Jeez. it sucks. Any other questions? Do you even like that guy? What do you think? No, Use you don't. your inference powers. Use your hmm. eyes, human. That's the only well, thing you have. Well, I also have a nose and I have one arm. Wow. Almost a full set, we'll set of We'll take every bit of insight you can muster with your senses and your smells. Maybe you have to lick the situation into clarity. What do you think? Oh. Hmm. Humans. I think next time I'm going to be worn by a dog. Yeah, and I, mean, I would cut off that finger. Rings kind of yeah, I was, about to, I was about to go to Ori and just be like, hey, Ori, you know that original author? <laughs> hmm. I mean, you're I talking to Ori like about it. <laughs> a literally million-year-old magical ring. You're like, oh, do you like that guy? <laughs> it's more of a joke. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> so uh, you didn't take it as well. Hmm. Well, do you know anything about this jacket off topic? What? What do you mean? Just off top. No, this, you know, this hoodie I'm wearing. Not the hoodie. The uh, cloak. The cloak. Yeah, this like hoodie. the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this hoodie, hoodie of darkness. It comes with pockets. Many Listen, pockets. down and I'm. I got my finger shot off by a bow and arrow. I'm gonna be an angsty person for a bit. Oh. Nimue's going through a phase. That's no problem. That cloak's easy. Um. Yeah, I mean that. Anytime you're in shadows, that cloak's gonna hide your presence. It also is pretty tough. It'll act as armor. Huh. I feel like that's information I could have been given sooner, but you know what? I mean, you didn't Water ask. Water under the sooner. bridge. Okay. ASK. You don't ASK. You don't GET. You know the ancient proverb. Hmm. Well, as long as we're asking questions, um, uh, were you around during the Empire? Because I already have one friend. I mean, who can do that's that. where I was forged. Hmm. By Empire Warlocks. So. Empire. Oh, uh, wait. I already knew that yeah. existed. That's, that's the World uh, of Warlocks War. World of Warlocks. World of Warlocks. <laughs> um, we're, gonna, well, we're not going to end your conversation. We're going to cut. Um, the the Outrider like rides into the city. Um, the per the messenger and the bug like climbs up the walls and moves towards the area where the second prelate the um the old castle keep which the prelate has taken up command of um and is already manned by all these rochi archers and stuff like that the um the 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 like messenger rushes in to uh, give them some information um ori is just hanging out with mankind and y'all are just chatting um Ashton, is there anything you want to do? Is there anyone you want to talk to? Or you just do you just want to get like a general look of the place? Like, do you just want me to describe what's going on generally? That would be best. All right. 
Um, basically, Bruno is getting all of his swordsmen to follow orders so that they don't kill Rochis. Um, they are all unhappy about the situation, but considering what enemy that they were worried about is coming, um, they're like making an uneasy friendship. Um, what's going to happen after that with the whole eternal servants to the Katani Empire? We'll see what happens. The Rochis are just... They're, these are warrior people. The reason they're forming this empire is because these are tough-ass warriors. And they're excited for this encounter. Um, they don't get to really test their skills. Humans don't really respect them enough to give them a good fight. And then they're either hunting monsters or other people of their tribes that are not as civilized as they are. So they're, they're looking forward to an, a big fight. Also, they don't really do sieges from what they're talking about. They speak in the common tongue and keep practicing the tongue um although they seem like they distaste it they keep talking about um the journey the pilgrimage the pilgrimage the pilgrimage the prophet and the pilgrimage are the words that come up most often and anytime you hear one of them complaining why am i talking in this uncivilized tongue you know it bruises my my tongue and my mouth you know some one other person will say remember the pilgrimage remember the prophet we need to speak the tongue of our subjects. Remember the pilgrimage. And remember the pilgrimage, remember the prophet. Um is is seems to be huge. Olympias, whoever the queen, quote unquote, or who they're calling the consul of the Katani Empire, is adored by these people. Absolutely adored by. I've played enough Halo to know where this is going. Yeah. And they they're saying that she has some sort of ability. They're talking about her ability, but it's unclear. Um, is there anything, Mankar, is there anything you're checking out? Uh, I'm going to ask Ori about... Yeah, so first I'm going to ask him, so I might, uh, can you make a, a more than one person here? <laughs> Potentially, but it's not as reliable. One is very, very safe. Depending on the size, two could be done. After that, it's uh, not really possible. Right. All right. Very well. Potentially do two, but it it would be a little risky. I'd rather not. Um, but I'd be happy to. Uh, I don't know. If you need me to look out somewhere or check out something, the main thing is I think I have a way to get us to a way station near here. Um, yeah, which one? Not, not a way station, rather a safe house for my sect. Um, still, I need to figure out. There is a uh, device that will take us from one place to another instantly, a, a teleportation device. And we could potentially take it off this way station. Wait, what do you mean? Like, if we had one, or there no, is I one? I have one, and trying to figure out where it is. Uh, it's more of a, a potential than a reality, and I'm trying to figure out where it is. That's where I've been looking around for the past few hours. I'm just taking a break right now, but I'm about to get back on it after I've answered your questions. Right, mate, well, uh, what does it look like? I can help you look. It's not really about that, unfortunately. It shouldn't look like anything. It could be disguised as anything. This old empire... Um, the empire had a, a, a service, a group. They've been called a dozen things, uh, an order. Uh, it's not quite clear what their name is, but the watchmen descend from them. Whereas the warlocks focused on the art of magic, and the, um, the, uh, the reeves focused on swordsmanship and warfare... There was another group that focused on technology, and they were uh, assassins, bodyguards, spies, a whole number of things. Secret uh, special operations unit. They used these to travel throughout the empire, and uh, apparently they're very hard to find. I found a key for this region that my sect has had in their vaults for a long time, and I have it on me right now. It's a peculiar ring that you will not be able to see unless you have the right eyes for it. Um... It's a bit of a devil to find right now, so I'm, I'm seeing what I can do. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do to help me. Actually, All right. actually. What's your note, yeah. Cameron? Five. 
You have the might. You have the right sort of eyes. Um, look around. Keep keep an eye out for something. Just you might be able to know. You might be able to feel it. All right. Sounds good. Any other questions before I continue my search? I'd like to finish this up before nightfall. For obvious. Nah, reasons. I'll start looking up around. I'll start looking around. Uh, where do you want to meet? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Let's meet by the uh, Southern Watchtower, farthest away from. They're, I'm assuming they're probably going to attack from the north. So. Sounds good, mate. Perfect. Uh, bring everyone you can there. We're going to have to leave your Strider behind, unfortunately. I'm sure yeah, he'll be fine. She served well. There's not much he else served. we can do. Okay. Yeah. Peace out, comrade. Um, you wait, hold on. What'd she say? Comrade. <laughs> we'll deal with that later. <laughs> Cameron's, Cameron's permanent anti-communist bias comes out in every setting. Um, triggered. Communist, we gotta get him. Hashtag triggered for sure. Um, Nimue, what, where did we I just join? We continue your conversation. What were you, you were just asked about the cloak, you just said... Oh. Yeah. Well, I might as well ask about the boots, too. I'm I'm sure they're just his style, oh. but I'd accept that either way. Oh, they are... look pretty good, don't they? They, well, they do look very nice for a human with your feet, which are d disturbing if you don't have them. It's only because you're used to them that you think they're normal. But those are beautiful enchantments. She kind of coos over like the artistry. Those are beautifully well done. Um... How to describe? I mean, I guess it's not that complicated. Um, see that wall to the right of you? Yes. Take a step on it. I cautiously take a step, ready the, to support the myself with the other grip foot. Under the side of the wall. Just I as walk if the up gravity and... switched to the wall. I take Rick and Morty. There you go. Um, don't don't use it for too long. I As get off the like, wall. No, no, no. It'll, t it'll. Oh. You'll know. You'll get a sense. It'll, it'll tell you when you have time to get down. But um, you could do it for I think a few hours. It's kind of hard to tell with some of these enchantments how long they'll last. But it'll recharge. You know, you just can't spend forever hanging upside down. Eventually, the enchantment would start to wear. But it'll let you know. Don't worry. Oh, Anything it's good else? To know. Uh, <laughs> I'm going through my list. <laughs> Nimue pulls out like a notebook. <laughs> Let yeah. me just <laughs> like starts picking up random items in the room. Does yeah. this do anything? Yeah. What's this? That's that's your currency. <laughs> that's Carlos. It's, it's Amazing. Carlos. I seem to be missing like forty. <laughs> Action. <laughs> so, anything uh, else you need? Uh, I think I'm good. Bam! Someone um bri uh, uh, opens up the door. There's uh two roaches. Um, stride on in. Please, Salutations. Anyway, you'll need to come with us. I would not refuse because I'm an intelligent person. You are, by that response. Um, do you have any weapons on you, Miss Nimue? Um, I got my short sword. I guess I'll just give that to you guys. Very well. Um, yeah, they, they, they just escort you outwards. Um, you get almost like a, a little whisper from the ring as you're leaving the room. Here we go again. Yeah, I do an um, insight check to see what they're bringing Ad me. Uh, yeah, give me an insight roll. Ashton, as you're walking Mim. So that's a solid seven. <laughs> um, probably because they, they like your, the style of your boots and they want to ask you fashion advice. <laughs> Ashton. Yes. As you're walking, Mimsy, um, who is happily slobbering along the cobblestones of the second way chamber. <laughs> um, I'd be like feeding her, like, <laughs> clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Casually. Yeah, um, no, you're definitely drawing some looks, but um, a couple. Uh, actually, they would send more than two for you. Um, about six of the Katon, like, riders on their, like, beetles, right up beside you. Mr. Ashton. Yeah? The second prelate requires your presence. Where? At the keep. We will escort you and your pet. <coughs> Alright. One of the, like the younger Katani seems like super curious about your your about Mimsy. 
Do all does all human have pet like this? No, she's special. Pet is incredible. See nothing like it in expense. So powerful, so strong. Yeah. Very strong. You could say I'm one of the strongest. One of most strong I have ever seen of human. Thank you. Have you ever arm wrestle? Yes, in the Far East we all the time. You're from Far East. I have heard story of Far East. Is real? Oh, of course. Pardon his accent, he is not quite as used to common tongue. I used to tongue of common. There you how. Now, Easterner, <laughs> wrestle arms with me, my comrade friend. Do arm combat with me. Alright, I am or, wearing my belt, so... Or some of your strange monies. <gasps> No. Does he have any? Yes, I have seven. He pulls out like two buttons, a shell, and uh, four colos. I have seven coloc. Arm uh, wrestle with me, strong boy. So four of those are colos. The rest is... Two shells and a button. Yeah, it's... I strongest... Three, three of that is not currency. <laughs> you don't have to say yes. Whatever you want. Do you yes. want to shame your strange, unhappy box? You will shame oh, your no. box she, wife. She won't be ashamed. Do not shame your box ashamed. wife. My box wife? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> For right. seven goals, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> give, me a, uh, give me a strength check. That's a 20. Unnatural. Okay. That's a 13. They have a strength of 2. That's a 15. Okay. What did you get unnatural? 20. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. Strong boy, not so strong. Um, yeah, you just bam, arm down. Like, no, no mercy. Whoa! So Is strong! Is this while we're walking? Yeah. <laughs> Is this on top of Mimsy? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, your box wife. Wow, box wife, very box proud wife. of you. Incredible. Yes. I give I you all the seven. four colos that I won. <laughs> yeah, he gives you the two shells, the button, and the four colos. Wow, so strong. How I be strong like you? Great beard. You've got to run 10 kilometers ah. every day. Okay. hundred squats and a hundred push-ups. Wait, is that from One Punch Man? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and never ever use air conditioning. I will never use air conditioning. I hate air conditioning. I don't even know what it is. Me neither. It's just what I was told to do. That's my name? We... My name equal Ivan. What is your name? Strong Ashton. boy. Ah, what is the name of your box wife? Mimsy. Ashton and Mimsy. Are you personal trainer for me now? If you pay me. I pay you seven colos. It's a recurring fee. Ah, how often I pay seven colos. I have more secret colos. Mm, every, every other day. Every other day. Oh, there's a lot of colos, but I even will find it. I must begin It'll my be running. Different. I have a lot of running to do, and he just like takes off. Bye. All the other, all the other like rojis just look at him and just shake their heads. One of them leans down to you and whispers in your ear, "He's the special one." <laughs> Seems nice. He's a sweet kid. His mother is very proud of him. Um, so, you, um, you were a spy. I like this so much. <laughs> that was the most random improv I think I've ever, ever done. All it right. was beautiful, Nathan. Well done. Um, Cameron. Yes. Uh, give me a knowing check, first of all, for your searches. This will be very interesting. Dude. Dude. 
Dun 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 dun. dun. Oh, well, then. Ah, yeah. Um, you do get like a strange feeling, and and through this like practicing of your senses, of this like extra sense you have, you feel like you you could go into this state of like extrasensory perception a little easier. Add one to your knowing, but you don't find anything. Okay. Um, eventually you're tapped in the shoulder, as you're now quite used to, by the invisible Ori. Ah, uh, friend. What is it, mate? There are a couple of buggies uh, coming all over here. It seems like they uh, are looking for you. Uh, do you want to be found, is my question. Uh, well, what's the worst that can happen, mate? We're going to be gone later anyways. Fair enough. Uh, keep an eye on you. I think I'm on the trail. Um... Is there a signal you want to use to get my help? Yeah, uh, do the old classic one. You know, ah. which... Ori, ori, but ori, maybe... ka, ka, ka. Yeah, maybe you should uh, show up next time. Well, I showed I use up it. last time. It's not my fault I was a few seconds off. Oh, all right. Okay, go on, go on. They're around that corner. Pretend to be surprised, please. Or not, if you want to be mysterious. Um, yeah. Oh boy, I hope no bug people come around this corner and collect me. <laughs> You're like <laughs> chattering around the corner. <laughs> Sorry to burst the bubble, Mr. Mankar, but we have to take you to the keep. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry, I was talking about the other bug. I'm they... happy to see you guys. <laughs> they exchange strange <laughs> looks and uh, shrug. They sent uh, three for you. Alright. Uh, so, <laughs> this is like some weird rating system. Like, how many bug men does the second prelate think it's it's enough to take you on? Um, yeah. But, anyways. Like, uh, I guess it's, it's like five. five in the special one for Ashton. Th three for it's Mankar. Like point one for me as I'm like a one on. <laughs> <laughs> they just send, they don't even send any bug men. They just send you like a letter. Please show up. Yeah, to they, the throw like a boot. <laughs> they throw like a boot through my window. <laughs> <laughs> Flashbang out! <laughs> um, <laughs> hiking boot out. Um, anyways, uh, through whatever means, um, you all arrive at the uh, the the temple, or not the temple, the the keep. Um, you are escorted into a private room by a bunch of rochis, and eventually are sitting across from the prelate in her strange armor. She walks into the room. Nay. Sorry. Vodka. There we go. There's like trigger words for each. No. Comrade. Vodka. Comrade. Vodka. Aha. I am in the Russian accent. Okay. Racist. There's a lot about Russians right there. <laughs> comrade. Vodka. Lenin. Stalin. Murdered. Well, you did. I mean, it goes vodka, then comrade. Like, I have arrived at the it's a Russian accent. Also, Eastern European. Racist. Polish. Okay. Anyway, I have received some interesting information from the great consul Olympius. It seems. And what's up, mate? Our consul, the prelate, is like pacing back and forth. Our consul is known for having dreams that we believe are of the future. In those, some of those dreams. You are all featured very prominently, including a ring that one of you bears. Nimue face palms. Here we go again. You face palm with your Nimue one hand, the ring. which has the ring on, the ring on it. <laughs> that ring, to be specific. No, I thought it was the other one. Your sarcasm is not appreciated, human. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I've just been in this situation so many times. The prelate raises her eyebrow. I will be curious to hear those stories. Either way, she's requisitioned that if found, as she dreamed about, then all of you were to be taken to the capital, post-haste. As this is about to be a very dangerous area. Prepare for quick travel. I'm assuming none of you have moved by giant beetle before, so I would prepare yourself. Do you have any questions? Yeah, mate, I need to uh, speak with uh, my fellows for a second. 
I think we have one last piece of business we have to do attend to before we head out. From now on, you are all to be placed under Kaitani Guard as you are all precious cargo as proclaimed by the Consul. None of you are to come to any harm unless, of course, you risk our lives. I cannot leave you alone for a second as there could be assassins nearby. According to her dream, some horror hunts you. And I have been right, proclaimed uh, as no, little uh, happy as I am about it, your protector. Fantastic. So I will not be leaving the room, and as your business has now become my business, you may discuss what you wish. Alright. Can you, uh, read and write? I cannot read and write the human tongue, no. Right, do you have paper? <laughs> I can fetch some, I'm certain. Well, uh, let me check real quick. I'm gonna open up the backpack. Oh. That's really smart. They can't read or write, so we can communicate. Seriously? I can't read. <laughs> I don't think any of you can read. Can can Mankar, can you read? Yeah, I can read and write. That's so where I learned all my tech is from books. Oh, jeez. So we can... Oh, my gosh. So, they... so and I doubt none of the bugs you can. <laughs> I'm going to roll an intelligence check for that. No, no, no. She said she couldn't. No, not to see if she can read or write, but see if she can figure out what you're doing. She's oh, got to roll below a five to not get this. Okay, so she's a smart bug. What do you well, need such of this for? I mean, these people have, have maybe more have more strategic skill than the rest of you, so they're not like idiots by any by any means. What do you need this paper for? Fighting. Pardon. I said for writing. I would like to I'm write shocked. something down. I'm sure we can get you some, but it is not needed right now. Discuss your plans. Ah, very well. All right. Well, Ashton and uh, Nimue, you remember the old friend that we haven't se Well, first of all, is everybody else here like Ableton. Ad Adelton is is here. Um, like your your team is here, which is Adelton, Ashton, um, uh, yeah, Mankar, he... and Nimue. Um, and of course your new escort. Right. Well, Ashton, uh, I'm pretty sure you would like to say goodbye to uh, some of your newfound brothers. Am I right? Yeah, I guess so. All right. And anyway, you probably want to say goodbye to your priest now, right? Yeah, so. yeah. All right. So I think we should say our goodbyes for it's the last time we may see some of these people. But uh, I think we'll be ready to leave sooner rather than later. All right, Buggy? I will provide you with escorts to make sure you are all safe as night is coming on scene. But Thank be careful, you. it is very dangerous out there. And if Her Highness's dreams are to be understood, something is following you. Right, mate. Well, I hope uh, Your Highness isn't too accurate with it. I hope so as well. All right, let's uh, head out. Um, um, each of you, like, with each of you go, like, a set of bodyguards. Um, there are two follow Nimue, um, four follow Mankar, and six follow Ashton. A squadron follows Ashton. <laughs> Everybody follows Ashton. <laughs> um, and it seems so, like... I'm, I'm not split. I'm, before we split up, I'm going to say... NK To who? To uh Ash anyway. What did you say? I'm sorry, what did you say? Because I know it's Okay. Okay. One. Shit. 
All right. Well, yeah, at this point, and uh, yeah, and K says your bodyguard. E A N K. Uh, I studied right, cryptography. Mate. Cryptography, mate. Well, this is not the it's trick. hardly a code, but uh, very well. That's well, my boys. See, our uh, our old friend Ori. He wants to uh, meet up with us before we. Leave. We'll be happy to escort you as you go meet him. Yeah, of course. Ashton, Emue, are uh, you down to follow? Of course, I haven't seen Ori in forever. Sure. Yeah. He, uh, he got here at a bad time, you know, just like us. I think he has something that can help us. Alright, so uh, let's go... Yeah, let's, let's go say hi. So all of you, um, the prelate sends another two for uh, Adelton. Um, and you guys all make your way down, uh, to, down to the docks. Um, is that the bad part of town? Sorry, not to the bad part of town, to the southern watchtower. Is that where you wanted to meet him? Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you make your way down there. So t there are 10 Katani warriors with you, as well as, uh, Adelton, um, Adelton, rather, um, and Mankar and Ashton and Nimue. And Mimsy and Chucky, of course. The um, he's walking in the shadows if she can. Yeah, and you notice, like, you can't quite see Nimue when she's in the shadows. Like, just your eyes kind of slide off her. It's very strange. Um, anyway. It's quite on mic. Just going to um, try to keep that under wrap. Okay, things go south. So, um, as you, you, you get to the southern watchtower and it is, it is empty. Um, okay. Mankar, you feel someone like grab your hand and move it and trace letters into your 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 palm. Uh, they they trace since you can write, which is very useful. It traces the phrase "kill?" Question mark. I'm going. Oh boy, here we go. I'm gonna just uh, crack my neck and nod. Um. Slowly, I, I'm assuming you guys are looking around, and like tutting, and like, hmm, he's not here yet, you know, like doing the whole um, the whole delay he? thing. Um, I'm gonna say, oh, I might as well. Uh, he usually makes a pretty get down close. I think we should duck. And I'm gonna drop on the ground. <laughs> so am I. In the um, shadows. All of you, all of you, drop, and Ori appears. He's holding like some sort of rifle. And as he puts his finger on the trigger, um, there's like this, there's this flash. Um, there's this flash and you feel like you're frozen for a second. And you see everyone in the room freeze as like time is slowed down. But where all of, where for all of you the time is slowed down, Ori is moving at normal speed. He pulls out two revolvers and just walks by the Keitani Warriors, <laughs> just emptying bullets into their heads as he walks by them. Just as Asshole. he finishes, he clicks something on his wrist. Time speeds back up to normal, and the bot there's just this. They're just ten shots go off all at once as the sound all hits at once. Cause the um the bullets like s s are sitting there in mid air, like right next to the foreheads of the Katani warriors as he fires the bullet. Um, oh, so cool. ten shots go off, and ten brains are splattered against the walls as they all crumpled the floor. All right, with a bang, I like that. Friends, it's been a while. Yeah. Right, mate. Uh, so I like stunned. I loot the body. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> been a while. They don't really carry. They don't really carry colos. Um, or anything interesting. They all have very. Um, they have really weird knives. I'll take them. I'll pick some up. Um, yeah, well, each of you can only take one of them. You feel like, for yeah. some reason, when you're holding the knife, like, you can't hold more. Like, you just can't compel yourself to carry more than one. So each of you can take one if you'd like. A Keitani knife. They also have war bows. Um, no one can draw them, but you could take them. Or you could each carry one if you want. Not because there's a weird sense forcing you not to carry them, but they're really heavy. They will weigh you down. With the exception of Ashton. I wonder, how, I wonder how much they're worth. Ashton. <laughs> 
I'll take one. This Fine. unused artifact. And sell it. You're the closest person who can get to drawing them. You actually probably have the strength to. The hardest part is you don't have the arm distance to. Maybe you could figure out a way to do it, but currently you're not able to. Um, maybe you could train. Training to do one. Um, yeah, as, you, as you're setting up, Ori, like, taps a ring... Uh, twists a ring on his hand and the ground, the cobblestones like tilt up and shift into positions the, clearly the ground here is like some sort of machine um, and there's like a crackle of energy um, as this this portal opens as these cobblestones are like pivoting around it I, uh, there is about the 75% chance of this working I like so, those odds yeah it's better than being bug slaves um, <laughs> You hear shouts from the Northern Watchtower and screams as, like, there is the sound of gunfire and swords clashing. Um, oh, now's a great time to leave. Yeah, I'd say we made it just in time. Uh, well, he's first. I think I'm jumps in. Uh, Nimue pops in, Ashton right after. Like the hit of a running start. <laughs> Very good. Uh, oh. Ori, Ori is like standing by there by the portal. Your last old friend, or new friend rather. Yeah, mate. That's, uh, Adelton. A portal? Incredible! I'm such an adventure. And he, he jumps on through. Right, here we go. See you on the other side, friend. Yeah. Um, as you jump through, you look back. And just as Ori steps through, you think you see something like opening the doorway to the Northern Watchtower, but the portal closes right after. Um, you guys are in a, like a, you're um, in a small, very very a very small room. Um, it's. It's like clinically clean, all made of metal, which is pretty rare. Like you guys have never seen a room that's made entirely of metal. Quite odd. Um, it's got glyphs all over the place and strange like wheels stuck onto the side of the wall. Um, it's pretty bizarre. Um, very strange, old looking technology. And anyway, you might have seen some of this in some of your old dungeon crawling. But uh, anyways, you I mean, guys are you guys are 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 standing there. Um, there is someone else with you, strangely enough. As you are looking around, Hello. there is another Rochi on the floor who seems to have snuck through at the last moment. Ashton, oh I have snuck through portal to find personal <laughs> trainer. Hello, I believe I am last surviving member of bodyguard. Some strange demon seem to have killed all my friend. <laughs> Yeah, it's very strange. Worry not, though. New friend is here. Ivan, protector. I shall make sure all is safe, and safe is all. How is Same, everyone? Mate. Uh, you guys don't have any psychic connections to anything, do you? I believe psychic connection is head to Beetle. If psychic is right word, Beetle are good friend. But I do not have Fred Beetle right now. <laughs> My mother so, said it was uh, too special to have a friend like that. Ah, oh, Ivan, that's terrible. No, it means I'm very it special. Means special. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's good for us. Well, I've been commanded by Prelate to protect all of you, and I see nothing else that I can do. So, I hope you don't mind, I'm only protector left. Probably worse protector too, but very, very Maybe. excited. Well, I mean, you are the only one alive. It is true. Might be better than you think. Perhaps I am. Ivan will well, uh, tell me what Ivan can do. Can Ivan is here if Ivan can help. Can you shoot your bell? Of course. I very good can shot. You... Well, I am one of the worst bugman shots there is, but compared to but human, that's like, very good. Uh, that's like a champ human though, right? Very good. Yeah. Human have no idea how to use bow. They're bow like slingshot. Very bad. Even worse than Ivan. Even more special than Ivan. Can can the bug people literally call him Ivan the Terrible? That would be sad. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps that is nickname. Maybe I will have to earn that nickname. Yeah. 
So, well, seems or like did we land little, in the uh, right spot? Yes. Uh, well, uh, welcome to the Rune Guard. That's my sect of the Watchmen, and uh, we're happy to have all of you. This is quite a little uh, circus we've got here. A mimic, a tiny bandit, a very large bandit in blue armor. <laughs> we've got a depth grover. We've got uh, a dragon bride. Um, we've got a magical ring, and we've got a, a special rochi. Um, welcome, yeah, three friends. More, three more hobbits, and we'd be on our way to Mordor. I think we are already. Well, oh, no. welcome to Rivendale for keeping our bizarre meta analogy. This is uh, the Rune Guard sect haven. Um, he twists the metal at the side, and the door opens itself, like the metal moving the side. This is probably pretty shocking. Mankar, not as shocking as that. Like, you've seen things like this before, but to see something actually working in this condition, like this smoothly, is pretty. It's beautiful in a different way that they won't be. Others won't be. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my. Would you look at that, fellows? <laughs> Sound like Adelton. This is incredible, a wall that opens itself! Incredible! Ivan has never seen something like that. Oh, here we fucking go again. And then Mimsy. Uh, yeah, uh, you're uh, a bug. Yes! What can I do? No, it's the same. Oh, I thought you said uh, what you need help from bug. Okay, I'll be quiet now. Um, the door opens and you are given a view onto a, a big room, again, within this strange metallic design with that kind of these stairways leading up and down. It's about three stories, um, but they're kind of, but it, it's an open room and there's just kind of walkways around the sides. Um, this room is filled with bizarre tech, stuff you guys have never seen before. This seemed to be like 20 or so people in here. Messing around with strange, huge robotic suits of armor, glowing swords, weapons, um, all these various items. It's just a treasure trove down here. All these people are forging or smithing. You see someone, like, you see someone, like, doing rituals before you come in. Like, you've never seen someone do magic. It looks like they're, like, prepping to do a spell, which is, like, something out of a myth. Let me see someone with big, huge piles of books, more than you've ever seen in your life. This is like a haven of knowledge, and it's all in this one, like, 100 meter by 100 meter square room. Um, like, pretty, pretty, it's a big room, but again, but again, it's just, this is a haven of tech and magic and knowledge. Um, Ori gives, like, a very stern look to, uh, Ashton. Don't even think about it. Don't yeah. even, don't even let the thought enter your mind, my big friend, because you do not want to know what our anti the our theft prevention looks like. Why am I here? <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, we had to speak with the elders, of course. Um, you guys walk through this like incredible wealth of knowledge. Um and eventually arrive at the other side of this room at a huge door. Um, Ori puts his hand to the door, and there are kind of sparks and whizzes as the door clicks, whirs, and the metal, like, folds in on itself. You have no idea where it goes. It just, like, folds into nothing. And you guys enter a big room, a huge room, a monumental room. This room could hold, like, a football field, much bigger than the room before it. But this room's almost empty. Along the wall is a huge, gigantic mural of, like, all of these people, these warriors fighting using, like, swords and guns and magic and flying spaceships and doing the, these huge battles. It's this impossibly huge history. And you see that all of these, like, figures and all of these, like, paintings and situations are all made out of calligraphy like every stroke is a word written out so it's this huge piece of art it's this incredible mural and from what little old tongue you can piece together this is part of like this is this was made by the empire a long time ago and looking out across this mural is like basically like a small little table a bookshelf and like a sleeping roll 
and there is the elder of the Rune Guard sect. The Rune Guard is the name of this this Watchman group. Um, and he he is he is at his desk with this incredible view out before him. Again, this little, tiny little desk with this huge mural before him, um, scratching out something with a with a with a with a, with a pen on parchment. Um, but he hears the door close behind you guys and looks around. Well, if it isn't Ori, I haven't seen you in ages. And look at who you've brought. I've only heard rumors about all of you. Wonderful to meet all of you, please. Actually, no, he doesn't have that accent. Sorry, that's saved for someone. I was about to say, I recognize that. I was about to ask him if he was that I, I guy. Only, I only have so many accents, so we will run through them, but... Uh, Ori, it is wonderful to see you again. Everyone, you are the ones I've heard about, of course. Please, introduce yourselves. Well, I'm Menka. The, and, uh, the new recruit. I suppose so. Yes, well... well I don't nice. really know how it works, but yeah. I'll talk to you about that, of course. Please. Um. Well, we'll get to the... Uh, the most interesting case last, but Lord Adelton. You know my name. How how peculiar. I do not know yours, sir. I am uh, the Elder, but uh, your family is very old and plays an important part of this puzzle. Ah. Ashton. <laughs> the name, like, rings out through the cavern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You do you like start the Mexican wave and you do it and Chucky do does it and uh Ivan and Mimsy. Mimsy just like jumps, but uh it doesn't really go behind sun's back. Um I uh Well I have much to talk with you as well. All of you have things that you need to uh must know before you move, because you have a lot to do. And of course Ms. Ninja. The package, as people like to call me now. Ah. That is quite curious, quite curious indeed. And the ring that you bear, of course. Well, that's the package. A bandit with the curse of gnome cast upon him. Hey, I'm Chuck. It's fucking nice to meet you, Mr. Elder. It's nice to meet you as well, Mr. Chuck. Mr. Chuckers. My full name is Chuckers. Ah. A noble, a noble heritage. Yeah, fucking right. And Orochi as well. Um, Katani warrior, I suppose. Ivan is name. Ivan is name. It is wonderful to meet you, Ivan. Well, I don't have chairs, but I hope you don't mind sitting. Um, I'm sure we can get some food. And, uh, please, tell me everything. Um, right, Mike, where do we begin? Do you guys fill him in on the whole, the whole deal? I mean, I'm not about to lie to a guy with a gun. Yeah, insert monologue here. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Um, some food is brought to you guys. They put it in, like, a box and push a button and the food like goes from cold to hot. Very strange. What? I have no idea what that could be. <laughs> it's a very, very new technology. You guys should capitalize on this for God's sake. <laughs> Does it kind of like company work? Yeah, it makes a humming sound. There's like a little plate of glass you can see inside the box and the food's like turning around. You think the food's it's, like dancing. It's... That's how it's warming oh. up. It's like an enchantment cast upon the food to make it dance. <laughs> I like this dance. <laughs> Truly, it is very beautiful. I have not eaten anything but giant beetle for so long. I thought you rode those. Hey, you will you ride and eat giant beetle, but different species. Very important uh -huh. to know different species. It would be like riding your baby and eating your horse. <laughs> well... <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Lost in translation? Perhaps, or perhaps not. We are roaches after all. Hey, it's nice just getting something warm to eat. I do have to say, this view is incredible. 
Absolutely incredible. Are we just uh, going to pass up this guy who said he eats babies? The what? I didn't hear you say He that. just said he eats babies. I don't know if I like him <laughs> I'm anymore. sure it must be lost in translation. No, I thought, he said he... Certainly. I thought he said he rode the baby, then ate the horse. I don't know what he said, man. He's Do crazy. not worry about it. I must go do squat. Be back in an hour. And he just, like, runs off. Right. <laughs> like a, another part of this giant room to do squats. But you tell the story to the elder, who listens intently, kind of nodding, um, and occasionally taking notes as you guys as you guys uh, answer a few things. And uh, finally, as the story's concluded, you tell the tales. The, the second way station is attacked right as you leave it. Wow, that is very interesting. A lot of players. Yes, you could say it's luck. Very lucky. <laughs> very, very fortuitous. Although who knows what forces are sponsoring you to help such things happen in time. Many things pursuing you. This puppet creature you've told me about seems to be quite dangerous. Kandar and his league of villains seems to be on your trail as well. You also seem to have escaped the uh, console. Whether she meant ill or well, she did not. Uh, we do not know. Also, of course, we have sought this ring as soon as we heard about it. And uh, I'm certain there are other forces that look for it as well. Hmm. And of course, this dragon gave it to you because it wants something. Well, I mean, it's unclear whether he's a dragon. I just think he's a warlock that got a bit too big for his britches. Hmm. Well, let me tell you all what we know. I'm very curious about this ship that you have found. The uh, Adelton family, or the Atraxi, as it is called in, in the old tongue, goes back. It is one of the founding families of the Empire. I know a little bit of that tale and a little bit of the story about how the Empire was founded, actually. Or at least if the information that I have is accurate. But the Atraxi are one of the main royal families. That ship could be very interesting. But I will answer all questions and give you what I know. First of all, we learned about this ring while when a Ori and a few of my other watchmen broke into an Empire archive. A lot of the data was corrupted or destroyed, but we managed to discover a few interesting things. Very powerful... Magic can be, I'm sure none of you are familiar with magical theory, but to sum it up briefly from what we know, it is can be grasped from the air. Uh, there is a certain magical current that runs through Atos, and Atos is quite rich in it. But if one were to draw extraordinary amounts of magic at once without damaging Atos, one would need a source. Rings like the Stormfire Ring were created to be magical batteries, in a sense. Can you mute yourself? Uh, it's coming through. Yeah, sorry. No worries, no worries. Just while I'm doing the monologue. Thanks, man. Sorry. The uh, These batteries... Magic is life. And uh, consciousness as well as anything else. And... Such batteries form their own wills, their own personalities as such. Humans are little oh, more than about it. magic compressed into a physical form. Now, these rings are lost or in different places or beyond our... They, they be, perhaps become their own creatures or landscapes or items... But we started to learn more about Ro, the warlock who we believe started this whole journey. Ro was an incredibly powerful force in the Empire. He sought to create a new man and experimented with dark things. Or so the rumors say, the legendary story is that the, he rebelled against the Emperor and an army of Reeves and other warlocks and whatever the special operations unit was of the Empire was sent to attack him and destroy him. They destroyed his army, 
stripped him of much of his magical power and threw him and destroyed his palace, throwing it into the fissure, which was created during the battle that tried to destroy him. That landscape was just a flat plain beforehand. Well, it depends. Some of our texts say that it was a jungle, a lush forest full of life. And during the battle, it was obliterated. And then the fissure was created to destroy the, the palace that Roe used. There are some texts that suggest Roe was obsessed with turning himself into dra a dragon. Incredible beasts of incredible magic power that the warlocks hunted long ago. And were hunted to extinction. Um, it was believed that Roe wanted to become a dragon, although it is not known if that is possible, so this would fit. Um, if he survived the battle at some point, was rebuilding magical strength, that would fit with his theory. Why he would want... It would make sense that a warlock of his capacity would have had one of these magical batteries, one of these rings. But why he would give it away is unknown. It makes no sense to me. Once I learn of its location... And if it's potential dangerousness, I sent my finest watchman, young Ori, over here with some of our best equipment to go secure it. Uh, after we found the ring, he reported back to us and was noted by some of my advisors that by killing all of you and getting the ring, we could get much faster. But Ori advised against such a thing, and you have, you owe him your lives for a testimony on your behalf. He's convinced us that you are a part of this, and I believe so too. I also do not know if I can remove the ring from you, even if I wanted to kill you to get it. it seem, I'm sure, it, from what I understand, it will have a mind of its own. Yeah, it kind of already has that. Hmm. Well, it will have developed one as soon as that much magic was compressed into one place. Now, some more information. One of our contacts, not a member of our watchman group, but a brilliant man, probably a preeminent scholar on this technology, is in Telus, the binary city. He is a depth groveler named Roland. Uh, Talus is an incredible place on the the most technologically advanced city anywhere on Atos. A marvel of engineering and knowledge and advancement. Roland is the uh, the technocrat, as he's been called, of that of that place. Um, I have not yet met the Duke of Talus. Um, he's quite a secretive figure, but Roland seems to support him, and all of their powers seem to be focused around technology. I, um, meeting with him, he might have an idea of what that ring could do, or what we can do with it, or more importantly, what Ro wanted us to do with it. Why did he give you the ring, and what did he do to you? That I do not know. If you do not wish to have this burden, we could attempt to take the ring from you and do this ourselves. I cannot promise the results, though. If you do wish to do this, I will send Ori and my other best operative with you all to tell us to discover what is going on. I am interested in the Katon Empire, which seems to be rising. I'm interested in this doomsday ship you have. I'm interested in the stories you have heard about this storyteller who seems to know how the Empire fell. I'm interested in what you wish in, in figuring out what the Katasi are doing, if they are more than just a, a boogeyman. Well, man, I can promise you they're more than that. But... As a watchman, I believe in one thing truly, freedom of decision. It's the fulcrum upon all of true life exists. 
what you all choose to do, I will make an effort to assist in. Thanks, Wyatt. Well, I think uh, we should talk amongst ourselves then. I will let you all have what time you need to think about things. But the three things we need to speak of are first, your plan of action, what you wish to do with the ring. Second, questions you have for me about anything you've learned. I'm a man of great knowledge. And third, I wish to speak to you first about the doomsday ship. And second, about entering into the Watchman Society for Mr. Mankar here. I have, some, I have opportunities for all of you, especially you, Mr. Ashton. I have some interesting opportunities for you. Now, Ori here will show you to your quarters. Please, take your time. Not too much time. You are being pursued. But get some rest. Um, you are all tended to by Watchmen medics. Um, it seems there are like 40 Watchmen in this entire sect. It's a pretty small group, and most of them are here right now, like getting ready to help with whatever is going on with this ring. All of you are here the full. Um, Hell yeah. In the, like, three day, in the few days that you spend here, um, each of you is sent a Watchmen tutor. And all of you are given very basic, common reading and writing skills. Um, Ashton is the only one who didn't have that. So Ashton, add basic reading and writing in common. <laughs> Cameron, add basic reading and writing in old tongue. Cool. Brink, add, um, you had basic old tongue already, so you have intermediate old tongue right now. Basically, all of you are instructed. Um, also, Brink, upgrade your herb, your herbalism skill to intermediate. You can, like, harvest herbs now yeah um and do like basic poisons basic solves um so you can you guys can do some basic stuff um so you need to talk among yourselves two things you guys need to think about first of all just talk about whatever you want to do before you meet with the elder again second of all if there's anyone you want to train you in something in the few days you're here let me know each of you get to pick one thing you get to train in besides the things i've already given you okay I'm going to be back in a bit because I want to grab a little snack. So, oh. yeah. Oh. What do you guys want training in? I'm going up to that ritualist guy, ask him what he's all about. Um, They've definitely cleaned up the rituals because now that we have non-watchmen in the group, they, 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 they put away a bunch of the cool stuff. You see the guy who's doing it. Salutations. Uh, Good eye, mate. How can I help? What do you need? What's up? What's that? What was that weird thing you're doing on the ground? Ah, that nothing. Watchman business. Hmm. Hmm. I seem to be a part of Watchman business now, considering I'm it's like true. working Are you on a behalf. Watchman? No, I'm you know just the ring bearer. Be careful with that. Sounds like that's copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Can't teach your watchman secrets, kid. Bag her off. Well, hmm. Do you know? Do you know anything about bidding a robotic appendage? Ah, uh, not really my speciality. Heard there's a guy up in Carradale who can do it. God damn it! It always goes back to Carradale, and that city mm -hmm, hates me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Well. This has been a lovely one-sided conversation. Ashton, what do you want to be trained in? Um, so I have... You said something about the bad boy aspect, and then also there's, like... Um, oh, I don't know. You there's are... also the villain name thing. I, said, I remember you said I could train in something, but I forgot what it was. I mean, you can so, train in anything you want. Yeah, I, like, I want to be a pick. I want to be trained in like pickpocketing or in sneaking or in climbing or in anything. Um, but if you want to be, be trained, sweet. you can. Yeah, you can get some pickpocketing training. I mean, if you want to be trained to be more of a bad boy, we could do that. I'd like that. Bad boy training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, and yeah, a big old watchman guy in a leather jacket comes over. <laughs> oh, he, my uh, God. He teaches you how to ride a motorcycle and how to part your hair and how to drink before you're of age. And, <laughs> yeah, and how to smoke. And, oh, it's a, it's, it's a whole education. Um, Get a bunch of tattoos. Yeah, bad, bad boy aspect. You guys literally just described pretty much my life. <laughs> and I don't think I'm a bad boy. That's a good point. That is a pretty good description of you. Um, Heard you like bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Cameron, what do you um? What do you what do you want to be trained in? How to pew pew good. Aha! Uh -huh. Marksmanship. Um. Yeah, Ori is the resident marksman, actually. So you sit down at a range. Uh, he lends you a thunder weapon, or you can practice with your refuse rifle. Um, and uh, ha add Eye of the Watchman to, as an aspect. Ooh. And that can be used for a couple different things, as Ori is going to talk for you. But right now, it's just for marksman. Um, have you picked something, Brink? Uh, hmm. I'll dub it down on herbalism. Do they have like supplies here? Yeah. Oh. Right. One moment. Why do I always try eating while I DM? Like every single time I have like memory loss. So I just forget that's a bad oh, idea wait, and then I try it. Um Can I change that to like hiding? Like getting ooh. used to going to like the shadows of the Bam. Boat. Okay, switch, yeah. Um yeah. Put um Put shadow foot as an aspect, and um, you just get like a sneaky little watchman boy, and he trains you up real good. So yeah, you're very very stealthy. That combined with your cloak is you're you're pretty hard to find uh, if you don't want to be found, especially if it's dark out. Nice. Okay, you guys have some talking to do amongst yourselves, um, or you can talk in private or with the elders or with any NPC. And a rune guard that you like. Um, but the elder wants to know what you guys want to do. Do you want to go forward with this ring? Do you want to try to drop it off with him? Do you want to see this to the end? Do you want to hunt down the Katasi? Do you want to figure out what happened to the Empire? Do you want to find the Targ's treasure? Like, basically, where do you guys want to go? What do you want to do? And that's your, your guys' All right. decision. All right, Mike, I'm trying to go to the island. Looks like there's a lot of cool shit there. This, this is between you three. Oh. The eye is like where the Katasi is, right? Or like where it like originated. Well, well, from what it sounds like, it's kind of where like anything that people don't understand came from the Isle of Meridian. That's what we keep hearing, so. I mean, that might be a good place to go. Where is like the eye located? I don't know. Caradil is a port city on like a big bay. Um and the uh, Meridian is an island in that bay. It is the this world's equivalent of the Bermuda Triangle when it comes to myths and legends. But if the Bermuda Triangle was where the boogeyman, the the um Loch Ness monster, the Mongols, the um Yeti, the and the Nazis all came from. That sounds like an epic place. And it is kind of like uh, in the direction we're like heading to find Roland and stuff. Yeah, it's um, Caradil's like roughly north of Telus. It's rumored that Caradil was the capital of the Empire. It's supposed to be the biggest city on Atos. Hmm. So was the that was also the capital of the Sidari Empire. Just putting it out there. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. It's also where people go to die in uh, Astra, but that's besides the point. References that literally only you and I are getting. But I appreciate yeah, them I'm anyways. Yeah, lost. Oh. Well, not only are there all references that only Brink or I can get, but it's references that only us on the entire Earth could get. But So that's why they're so good references. So we're in our own little reference club. Okay. Either way. What do you got? I mean, this is your three's decision. I play no part I in this. I kind of like that because like we're kind of going in like one direction, or not? Yeah, we're going in like one direction. 
So like that all kind of lines up. So our Meridian, Caradil, and when we're when we're at Caradil, you can get another armor. Caradil is also yeah. where Targ's treasure is supposed to be. It should be noted. So it's like a triple well, threat. There you go, Ashton. And I doubt any of us want to deal with the bug people and meet their like queen. No, rather, rather not. Well, then you don't mind. I want to go to Caradil. <laughs> What'd you say, Annalisa? I want to go to Caradil, find Targ's wife, and then get all of the money. Bam! So it seems like you Caradil wanna... is your next stop. You gotta finish off the family, Ashton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've killed all of Targ's children. <laughs> and Targ is now dead too. You just have to kill the wife. That's There's it. one left. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh god. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, now the main question is Do you want to take this ring with you to tell us? I mean, I kind of have to. Just because it's like, uh, kind of like my source of protection. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Because, like, think... the Watchmen won it. But also, if in any way loses that, like, what lost an arm and pretty much like yeah i could the like nexus of her power yeah i'd basically kind of become like peter yeah i'd be like the <laughs> cannon potty <laughs> hey this is all you guys whatever decision you want to make you could stop all this and start a small business i would legit That's allow that peeling too. And we can say that box that radiates. <clears throat> oh, yes. A bunch of the strange dancing boxes. A box Not micro. Not to be confused with box wife. Two very different boxes. <coughs> okay. So, should we box head to box wife is best wife? wife. Teardris, then Caradel, then the island of Meridian. Yeah. And that's where you'll die. So, it'll be a nice ending to the book. Okay. <laughs> So, um, you guys have, have done your things, um, and you go back to the elder's chamber, to the mural, the mural wall. Um, the elders had a nice little nap. He's having breakfast. And you guys trudge in after – you guys have been kind of running and fighting and patching up old wounds. So, to get some modern medical care, some real rest, some real food – it's just been luxurious, and you all feel great. Um, there's just, I don't know, it feels good to have just gotten some rest. Um, well, tell me what you have decided. Well, Mike, I think we're going to go to the Isle of Meridian. Like, there's a lot of interesting things there that need studying. Mm, one moment. <laughs> the, Anna, the Anna needs to talk to her sister. Oh wow! Fantastic. All right. Auf Wiedersehen. Guten Nacht. Okay. I'm back. <clears throat> what was I? Ah, you were telling me what you wanted to do. The Isle of Meridian. I would be very curious to get some data in there. It's always been a dream of mine to get a Watchman or two out that far, but projects have always been pressing. I would be interested to see what you could all turn up. Continue. Well, my, that's where we. Uh, that's where we went ahead. And we'll go through Teardrasil and meet up with Roland on the way. Tell us. Tell us. Teardrasil is in Azeroth. I should have known that. Keep going. <laughs> oh, we're you're, meet up you're with all Roland. monologuing to me, an NPC. So please, continue. To uh, inspect the ring and see what he has to say. And then... Come on, guys. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then we go to the island of... Very well. 
Now. Mankar. Ori yeah, has vouched for you to become a uh, squire of the Watchmen, the lowest rank. And that you have shown all the characteristics of a Watchman that uh, the Rune Guard sect espouses. Um, courageousness, creativity, flexibility, uh, tactics, strategy, understanding and love of technology, enough morals. Um, I think I hit about all the important ones. How interested are you in joining our little Boy Scout club? Well, I mean, I don't think you should undermine yourselves like that, because I'm very interested. Mm. I can tell you what we believe in. Technology is, well, potentially one of the factors that destroyed the Empire. One of the things that tore it asunder was meddling with things beyond its control. And now, those powers are out there dormant but waiting sleeping giants waiting to awaken, sometimes literally, and destroy things. Although different sects seek technological power for other reasons, the Rune Guard believe in learning and knowing, uncovering knowledge, delving deeper into the Empire and the secrets around it and the technology around it. And whenever we discover a ticking time bomb, to defuse it and harness its power for future need. That is what we believe in. Well, my, that sounds right up my alley. Fantastic. I think I'll fit in just fine. I am uh, foregoing all the needless trials and paperwork, and as from what you've already gone through, seems to be trial enough. Mankar, Neil. Right. Um, he, he pulls out a small like a handle to a sword and um, clicks it. Clicks like a button on the sword. The air above the sword like whirs, like hums. And it seems like there's heat emanate, like there's the heat wave effect above the, the, the handle of the sword. Um, he like moves one end above your left shoulder and above your right shoulder and then clicks the, the button and the, the, that strange effect, the whirring stops. I knight you squire of the rune guard. You are squire under knight Ori. My uh, my best watchman operative. Well, one of two. Ori rolls his eyes at this. Uh, serve him well, and soon you will be a knight yourself. Go well, and do us proud. Ori will give you the customary... And he, he glimmers, as all watchmen share a love of technology... Starting equipment. Before Hell you yeah, Mike. Um, and of course, you don't have to now, but Ori will tell you about the Watchmen's specialities and whatever field you're interested, or if you wish to start a new field yourself, you'll be welcome to go into. Now, on your way to tell us, are you all interested in... Uh, I would be interested in your information that you get from Meridian, if you'd be willing to... Uh, and any... It, artifacts or things you find, the rune guard would pay handsomely for them. Well, I think, uh... Pay, you say? That, that's Ashton's department. Yeah, that's... Mr. Ashton. I think that's a good deal. Yeah. The rune guard would be happy to enter into a financial agreement with you. I love that. You seem to have ability to gather the, uh... Pardon my crude terms, but the scum of the earth around you. For example, although this is should be literally physically impossible, we have discovered that there are members of a group called the KK. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound terrible at all. <laughs> of the Kolos crew. In other cities, despite the, the second way station being completely cut off from the rest of the world, it has somehow, through some impossible skill, spread to other places. And you are, have a growing gang of operatives throughout Atos. 
how you have managed this is beyond everything I believe about reality. <laughs> Physical but, boundaries but... do not stop greatness. <laughs> that seems to be true. We would be interested in paying for rare Ooh, artifacts so or things that your operatives find. We could enter into a very nice financial agreement. As a watchman sect, we are yes. very, very wealthy. Yeah. We're doing He sticks out his hand to shake. I shake it very enthusiastically. Bam. And the KK, pause, and the uh, the rune card have entered into a, into, into a long financial agreement. Um, bam. Paperwork is fair for suckers. Fantastic. Um, I will make sure that any of my operatives out in Atos will uh, try to protect yours, if they can. Uh, Appreciate it. This will be very, very beneficial. And if you are all going to be working with the Rune Guard, my uh, tied for first best operative, or he rolls his eyes again, is uh, someone you might wish you might wish to meet. A uh, rather interesting fellow, one of the most extraordinary people I've had the pleasure of meeting. Uh, he is. Uh, how do I describe him? <laughs> I don't know if you wish to, if you wish to be called his professor, professional name. Um. Well, his name is Doctor West. If you must know, he is an extraordinary man of great knowledge and with an interesting skill set. Um, you will have a, uh, a chance to find him on your way towards Telus. He is in a town called Doro. Um, oh, which is boy. on the way. Hmm? What bothers you, Squire? Well, uh, the name Doro brings back bad memories. Mm. Nothing. Well, my apologies. His first name is Christopher, by the way, Mr. Ashton. <clears throat> Although I could, I I could copy Kanye West's accent, like an inflection, and do a whole character just based off him. That'd be a fun attempt. Um, also racist, but that just makes it even more fun. I feel like so. I haven't done a Chinese <laughs> one this this season. We'll have to get around to that. Um, there is also another opera. Our exact wife. <laughs> <laughs> done. done don't let me forget that Annalisa when I go to her character when you meet her she's, she's she has a Chinese accent don't let me forget it oh hello Mr. Ashton <laughs> that's what we'll go for um, I'll have to top that up that's rusty I'm not racist enough to really get that going um, okay <clears throat> so <laughs> Thanks, Annalisa. Um, if you uh, if you meet with uh, Doctor West, then you will then he he will assist you along with Ori in your adventures. Um, are there any questions I can answer before you head out? I'm good. I don't know about you all. Of course, after I get my. Outfit. You guys said you knew a lot about the Empire, right? Yes. Or more than most. We have a ship with us. Is it anything like those on the uh, mural? I'll kind of point to the mural. You bring up an interesting point. There is a ship on this mural that I have not been able to puzzle out. Um, he walks with you guys over to to a, an area again just like a little closer to the mural because it's, it's kind of far away um, but he points out a ship to you where all the other ships are kind of classic like aerodynamic orbital slash deep space ships um, you know very elegant and seemingly they seem to all follow a similar style except for one ship which is like abstract with all these bizarre shapes and like 
At the center of it, though, there is an eye. Looking at all these bizarre abstract structures and kind of optical illusions that are carved with all these calligraphic shapes. This has always puzzled me. We have heard rumors buried under loads of classifications of a new method of power, a new type of ship. And this could fit with the tangent drive, as bizarre as that sounds, that seems like DS is powered off of. I might be interested in speaking with her. Well, uh... That is your prerogative, Lord Ableton. Ah, yes. Well, I mean, I this is the mystery of my house. This is what I am worried about not understanding before I die. And that is something I need to worry about, you know. In this adventure, this uh, butler man, I am still looking for, I don't know, a beautiful damsel in distress to sweep off her feet, you know. Someone I can take back to my... My, my, my mansion. <laughs> or we'll find some, you another one. Mike. Another mansion? I yeah, mean, yeah. They grow on trees, honey. Yeah, they're a dime a dozen, dude. A dime a dozen. A cola's a dozen. Um, but, uh, I will, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I need a, I need an heir. <laughs> don't mind me being so crude. Uh, but, either way, this mystery takes close second to what I must do before I die. <sighs> Say, uh, do you guys have any kind of cloning technology here? Um, we have texts about it, but it is only quite theoretical, unfortunately. Ah, uh, well, nice try, but, uh, looks like you're actually gonna have to do something with it. You mean the perfume for men? Call it what you will. Yes, yeah, yeah, something like uh, that, right? You can make cologne out of people. I suppose yeah. if you have the interest to. <laughs> the elders like struggling <laughs> not to laugh. I'm um, sure there'd be a market for it somewhere. Uh, one could say so. I either way. Perhaps in the Katasi society. Mm. Who knows? My cologne is called is bad. Bob. I am not a superstitious man, a squire man car, but I have a question. If you are at a village and someone tells you there is a ghost in the woods killing people, do you care? Ghosts aren't real. doesn't matter. Well, I mean, if people are dying, even if it's not a ghost, it's worth checking out. Exactly. If 200 people tell you that ghosts are killing people in the woods, it might not be ghosts, but people are dying in the woods. There are many tales about the Katasi. I would not say their names so lightly. Yeah, mate. We got one in our heads already, so... Hmm, I think we're more royally so. fucked, but I guess uh, we're, we're going to try to fix that. Well, I would hope so as well. Are there any questions you have before I send you off? I'd like to further our trade agreement. You'd like to further what? I oh, yeah, sorry, you cut out a little bit there. Discuss the trade agreement. What questions would you have? So the price at which you purchase these artifacts and stuff, that would be for me and my gang to decide. Is it would be for us to decide. We will pay for what artifacts are useful. Unfortunately, we will not pay more for how difficult the artifact was to get. If you find an artifact on the ground randomly, but it is the most useful artifact that we've ever heard of, then we'll pay a high price for it. Even if you spent a year getting an artifact that is next to useless, we don't care much for it. It is the quality of the artifact or item that will be with price. We are willing to haggle re within a reasonable level, but considering we understand this tech more than you do, most of the price setting will be done by us, but we will pay you fair. We These artifacts are important to us, and we are happy to pay a high price to make sure they do not go elsewhere. All right. I would not intimidate us, however. I believe Ori is giving you a demonstration of what Watchmen are capable of. A yeah. friendly business agreement. 
Very good. Okay. Are there any other questions before we send you on your way? I think uh, we better get going then. Yeah. One more thing. I would. We don't have since time is of the essence with this ring. We do not have the time for a full interrogation of your ship. If you could figure out more information about why the ship was created or what the ship is made to do besides general doomsday regulations, it would be of great interest to me. <coughs> the Traxi are one are one of the starting founding nations of the empire, founding uh, families of the empire. And they are a core of the Empire history and the puzzle as to why they are gone. So, if you can find that information, it would be good. Meanwhile, Ori will take you to the exit out of here. Thank you, Elder. It was wonderful speaking with you. All right, all of you. That's a nice little rest you got here. Better get going before you all get soft. Um, anything you need before we go on our little adventure? Oh, can I pick up some herbalism supply? Bam. You have a basic herbalist's kit. What about that uh, starting equipment, Ori? Uh, I, I forgot. I nearly forgot about that. Well, let's get you what you need. Um, you are given a uh, strange... Do you want a trench coat or just like a, a surreptitious um, armor? Oh, I'm going to keep... Uh, I don't know what surreptitious... Uh, but... Like this subtle... Like, hard to notice. Basically, they can make armor look like what you want. What do you want to wear? Do you want your tuxedo to be armored? Yeah, I want to wear my spiked tuxedo. Okay, bam. So they switch out the material of the tuxedo, but they have pre-placed holes so the spikes slot through. Um, that tuxedo is the level, like, they also switch out your spike armor so it's not as heavy. Um... Basically, the spikes are just for for a show at this point. I mean, they're they're real metal, but the real armor is that tuxedo. That tuxedo is the armor of plate mail with the weight of a tuxedo, uh, made nice. out of a watchman like a uh, ballistic weave, basically. Um, that is your armor. They're going to give you a watchman medical kit, which they're going to train you how to use. It's pretty advanced tech, but it's not like they've simplified it down to pushing basic buttons. You can use it once per session, and it heals a bar. Sweet. Um, you are also given a revolver. Um, it's a pretty powerful revolver. I don't know enough about guns to actually talk about it, but it's a it's a strong boy. Um, I'm gonna say it's a 44 then. Bam! I trust you. Hand cannon. <laughs> you know, it's a hand cannon for sure. It also is like a little futuristic. Um, but you don't have any, you have, um, you have 12 bullets for it. Um, okay. but this is a big boy. These are, this is, this is like, this is like a sci-fi revolver basically. Um, you are given that and, um, there is a ring that you are given to communicate with or you can like speak into the ring and or he can, can hear you and he can do the same with you. Sweet. Bam. Um, is there anything you else you guys need? Now, unfortunately, you two can't like get watchman level equipment. But if you need basic equipment like bandages or any equipment that's not crazy tech, then you can have it. I'll take some bandages. Yeah, take a basic medical kit. Can I get like, like one of those paralyzed potions again? Yeah, sure. It has three uses. You could like oil your short sword up through three hits with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys are packed up, um, and uh, you go back to the portal room. And um, yeah, it's Ori, Ivan, Ableton, Chucky, Ashton, Mankar, and um, and Nimue. Um, what time is it? We've got half an hour, right? Everyone's here till 11? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fantastic. That's right on time. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Um, all right, friends. We will be going to the village of Dora. We're looking for uh, Dr. West, I believe. And um, and then we'll be heading on to Telus. This whole area is a nice little forested area, kind of the suburbs around Telus, where... Um, 
maybe a f week or so travel from there. Let's see if we could get some other transportation or some such. Um, but for now, let's go. The uh, metal panels move upwards and start rotating the around the center of the room where like a portal rips through the fabric of reality. Um, and Ori grins and jumps through. Running start right after. <laughs> this isn't credible going through a weird doorway. And Ivan just pops on through. Look, and here we go again. Come on, big boy, let's go. Here we go. And you and Mimsy and Chucky hop on through your little crime family. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm walking through as well. Box wife. Box wife and tiny boy. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys all pop through. Um, you are now in like the Telus Valley, basically, the valley around Telus. Um, it's pretty beautiful. You guys have been traveling through the fissures, first of all. And then you saw Kieran, which is kind of in the mountainous area. And then you were in the expanse for a while. You haven't seen green in a long time, it feels like. You're in a forest, a rich, lush kind of pine forest with these huge pine trees. Must be like 100 foot tall or something like that. Just stretching out towards the sky, verdant green needles. Um, the ground has that like really soft, like I, all of you guys have been hiking in Colorado, I should hope. Um, Annalise and Brink at some point. Um, but there's like that kind of soft knee part needle part dirt like pathway. Um, there's aspen trees. It's a big green forest. Um, and it must be sort mm -hmm. of like coming out of um, start. It must be sort of springtime right now in um, ah Mimsy, beautiful Mimsy, box <laughs> wife. Um, <laughs> anyways, you uh. I was looking in the chat, sorry. Um, yeah, it must be about springtime in the Talos Valley, but uh, it's it's pretty beautiful. There's like a little cobblestone path beneath your beneath your feet. For the first time, you haven't been in some like cyclopean landscape, you know, and you're actually in some like nice little valley. It's quite beautiful. Inside check. <laughs> Give me a. Rest. I have my. No way can be this. <laughs> no, they, I mean absolutely not. Yeah, give me a roll. Yeah, one sec. It's a 24. Um, you're pretty near a village. You can hear like a smith in the distance and you can hear kids running around. You hear some like horses, um, which are pretty rare in this world. They mostly don't like survive in a lot of the ecosystems on Atos, but you can see this would be kind of a good area for horses. Guys, these people aren't riding insects. I don't think we should trust them. You've all heard of horses before. <laughs> It'd be like the way everyone's heard of like ostriches. Like you may not have seen an ostrich, but everyone's heard of them. Yeah, but people who ride ostriches are normal. People who ride horses, eh? <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. So this whole area, all basically the entire Telus Valley is controlled by Telus. It's kind of like a city-state sort of sort of deal. All these little villages are under Telus's protection, and Telus has a temple. And since it's a, it's called a binary city. It's at the lowest point of the valley, so it's halfway between a depth groveler city and a temple. Um, at the top there is the temple, which has swordsmen and priests and that whole deal. And then at the bottom there is the depth groveler city, and they kind of meet. Um, and that's where Telus is. Um, so this depth groveler um, temple group, city state basically controls this whole valley. So everyone's here is part of Telus, basically, even if they're a few weeks away. Um, yeah, so what are you guys doing? It's pretty beautiful. Ivan is shocked by the green, and he's just with his mouth open like a fish, just uh, just he's never seen living on the expanse his whole life. He's never seen anything like this. All right, mate. Uh, close your mouth, or else. I don't know. I guess you eat bugs anyway. That is true. Bug very nutritious, but I will close mouth if polite. This is incredible. I do say it's lovely. Yeah, maybe this is where I should build that mansion you were talking about, Butler Man. It is quite nice. You know. 
we might be able to find a nice little spot on the Isle of Meridian. I doubt a lot of people <laughs> live there, so... Uh, it would be saying, very low-valued real city. estate, I would say. You know, beachfront property. <laughs> you okay. always talk about opening your own business, so uh, start exotic, one here. Exotic I can, I, creatures. Yeah, I, can, I can just imagine like the real estate trying to sell it. It's not a one million year old abandoned castle. It's it's rustic, you know. And they they're not Katasi skin puppets. They're exotic wildlife, you know. Just spin like, the whole thing. Just take yeah. mess with them. Yeah, it's like bird watching. <laughs> they're distance. they're more afraid of you than you are afraid of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. Or or a uh, or a kind of. Head on in. You'll know Dr. West when you see him. He's probably performing at one of the inns or something such. Right. Ori. Yeah. If I was a knight of the Watchmen, what would I be doing? Uh, as in, like, what would your behavior be, or what would you be allowed to do? Which one? Well, I assume I'm allowed to do whatever I want, oh, yeah. so long as it doesn't, uh, you know, be evil or something. I mean, the Squire well, I mean, Knight situation is that you can literally do whatever you want right now. I've just got to make sure you don't kill yourself. That's really my job. Yeah, but I've noticed you always run off and do uh, your own thing. Yeah, I, I know. I trust you. I know you're going to do... You're gonna, they'll take care of yourself. Um, what would a watchman do in this situation? Keep an eye out. Uh, look around. You never know what, what nasty buggers. Pardon the expression, Ivan. It is no problem. It is a good descriptor. I might be hiding around here, so just keep a wary eye out and uh, take the lead. Right, mate. All right, so I'm gonna go into the town. Bam. Um. So yeah, there's 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 kids playing. You see a swordsman on like horseback, um, running by. There's a bunch of people and like very. There there seem to be people dressed in like two different types of people dressed in clothing. There are um. There uh there are people kind of dressed in very simple, plain kind of drab clothing, and everyone else is dressed in kind of pretty bright colors um a swordsman um and all the swordsmen are dressed in colored clothing kind of rides up good day travelers uh he he draws his blade and salutes from horseback i am indoro of the fourth oh salutations uh no swordsman among you i can see civilians uh what is your business uh we're here to talk to a friend ah well let me send one of the slaves to show you around and uh, let Slaves. me know if you need anything. Right. He like claps his hands twice, and one of the people in kind of the the simple clothing runs on over. Yes, Master Indoro. Show these fine civilians the way around. Um, of course, Master Indoro. And the the slave bows low and kind of runs over. Where would you like to go? What would you like to see? Do these people treat you right? He like gives you a blank expression. Are you happy? You have just asked the equivalent in such a society. You've just walked up into a society and asked the equivalent of, what if you could describe the your genitals in a few words? What would it be? You've just asked that equivalent of an uncomfortable question. <laughs> Please describe yourself naked in as much detail as possible. Like it's just that's such an awkward question to ask. Hey, I'm from the Underdark. I don't understand. Fair well, enough, at least that's what I'm, I'm gonna I'm say. Assuming, <laughs> yeah, there we go. I was about to say, you are not as special as Ivan. You can't, you can't maybe get away with that one. <laughs> um, I do have minus four. Can I? In oh, what did you say, Annalisa? Can I like interrupt this entire exchange? Yeah. Right here? You, you're the biggest man on the block. You're Ashton. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, you can, you can kill us with a punch. Yeah, go for it, man. I don't want to do I've been it. thinking about it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the slave like, take us to the best restaurant. I'm hungry. Of course, 
I can take you there right away. Uh, so on the way there, uh, can I just ask the slave? Uh, yes. Hey, so uh, what is what your you... name, master? Oh, I'm not your master. I believe he. What is your name, master? Off. Is this? Can I incite this person? Yeah, give me an insight check. It's a uh, eleven. I mean, seems quite eager to please. Doesn't have any like. Uh, hmm. Not so brainwashed. I'm is the question? I'm is the answer you're looking for? Oh, I I honestly thought he was a robot. No, uh, it is a human. I, I I thought it was like Siri or something. No, like times a thousand. It is a human uh, who is excited to please you. Uh, my name's Nimue, but uh, Master Nimue, what can I uh, what can I do? Do you have any questions about our I'm, town? Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with a uh, Talus culture. Uh, you mind telling me more about it? Well, we're united by the Great Treaty of Talus, where the leader of the Depth Grovelers and uh, the High Priest. Uh, made a deal and of course they decided to link their cities to forestall any conflict between the two cultures ever since then tell has been a pretty prosperous location um, the depth grovelers technology and the swordsman's skill defending each other and uh, guarding each other's blind spots it's a pretty incredible place to be hmm and where do you kind of fall into that? Ah, slavery was a way to uh, make sure people who weren't contributing to, to society positively could uh, could assist. So criminals and people who were detrimenting to the main goals of Telus were turned into slaves. And they just are happy to be slaves. They weren't for the first five or six generations, but it's been well. I think in a few years it's going to be the a thousandth anniversary of the treaty so you weren't a criminal you were just born no. in slavery of course oh that's uncommon from where i come from some people would, might can even still call be made it... slaves of course i mean but some would call what you're going through almost immoral it's a noble calling i see no issue with this. As, as long as you're happy with it buddy some people aren't but I see it as a noble calling towards the goddess and towards the greatness of Telus. Well, the goddess also. There's a reason it. other city states fall and tumble to nothing. Where, but I'm sorry, I shouldn't be arguing with you about such things. No, you're allowed to. You're allowed to argue. I encourage you to argue. He shakes his head, smiling. <laughs> Foreigners, where can I show you, Master Nimue? Uh, a local inn. I guess. Ah. Or Ashton, where were you? Where the Iron you Frog head? is the place where Master Ashton wished to head. I shall take you there immediately. Um. Yeah. They, he takes you to the Iron Frog. Um. There. There's slaves like cleaning the way outside. There's a swordsman at the door, like uh, of the first who does like a quick salute to a civilian, uh, a very drunken salute to a civilian. Um. As you <laughs> go in, the place is pretty raucous. Um. People are serving. F there's slaves serving food. Um. There's like gambling and betting. Um. It's it's just like this whole. It's it's a it's a pretty cozy little inn. But the food seems to be great. Um, there's a river running through this town, so a lot of fresh fish is being served. Um, and uh, there's just it, – it's, it's a pretty hopping place. There seems to be a, a stage, but it's so packed towards the stage that, um, that it's hard to see who's performing. But, um, yeah, every, 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 everything's popping, and um, – the, the servant kind of made, like is talking with the slave is talking with other slaves and make sure you guys get to table but um comes back to you is there anything else you require would you like me to assist you for the rest of your evening and make sure you're comfortable here in Dora yeah why not okay um and he kind of stands at your side how can I assist who owns this place ah food and drink I, I will speak to a slave about getting you food and drink immediately. The owner of this place, I'm afraid I do not call. I, I'm so sorry, but I, I will get the name as soon as I can from the other slaves. And then he, he kind of rushes off. Um, What are you guys doing? You find a table? Uh, where, do, where do you go? Find a table and wait for food. Bam. Um, Yeah, the... Uh, the slave uh, the, the slave boy who's, who's kind of helping you guys out. 
um, soon a bunch of slaves arrive and kind of and serve you guys a bunch of food. Um, the price is a colos per person. Um, it seems they're used to strange things because although Mimsy gets a couple weird glances, like no one's nearly as bothered by the mimic, the pet mimic as they should be. Um, well, these like, are the same people who ride on horses, so they're used to <laughs> <laughs> used to monsters. <laughs> um, yeah, Here's they're, my they're, box wife. Um, each one, <laughs> each yeah, Colos per um um a Adelton can pony up if no one else wants to. Yeah, I'd be happy I'm willing to. to... Uh, to purchase uh, such a pittance for our adventuring group. And he sprinkles some, some money towards the slaves. <laughs> sprinkles. <laughs> uh, he does like the salt shaker thing, like rings it out of his wallet. Um, yeah, so it's it's a pretty good food, like some, some salmon and some like freshly baked bread, um, like pretty fresh milk, homemade butter. Uh, it's, it's pretty like a good hearty meal. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, something, there's something, those dancing boxes that the watchman had that can't quite match this, this homemade, this homemade cooking. Anyways, um, the boy rushes back to you if you've been kind of just soaking in the ambiance of the music and the sweat and the screaming and the people yelling at each other as they gamble and one, there's a swordsman gambling with another and they, they have like a duel over it, but they're using blunted blades. So there, there's a quick there's a quick duels like a little area is is, is uh, opened up in the center of the of the iron frog where they're dueling each other with the blended weapons um one of them wins and claims his victories with the roar and the whole bar cheers him. it's it's a lovely little place the boy eventually rushes back to you uh, master johansson owns this bar he uh also runs the town slave auction he's probably the richest man in town right now hmm I like well, uh, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be interested in attending the slave auction, Master Ashton? I might. <laughs> what have I created? Uh, it's like Christmas. It's to- <laughs> the slave auction is tomorrow morning, bright and early. I'd be happy to escort you there. Sure. So, the slave has to do whatever we say, right? Of course. So what if I ordered you to get paid? He looks like he's about to have an existential crisis. <laughs> he's like, I basically no, asked no, him to divide my... <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <laughs> there, there, are, there are many servants of rich men who are, uh, who, who, are, who are paid a pittance. Slaves can even own other slaves or own businesses. It's been sometimes a, a, a wealthy business owner will create a business buy a slave and make the slave run the business where he owns the slave allows the slave to make money and to own other slaves and for example I'm not the slave of the swordsman you spoke to I'm the slave of the town I'm supposed to guide visitors and to help wherever I can the town purchased me and do you have a name besides slave oh um he has to think for a little bit as in, I, I, I have to think for a little bit. Joshua. My name's Joshua. Okay, Josh. Joshua. Can I call you? Well, oh, yes, of course, whatever you want to call me, Master. Name okay, right. Joshua. Uh, I'm not going to lie, this all makes me very uncomfortable, but... I, with all due respect, happy. I can definitely tell, Master, anyway. No, I thought I was hiding it so I don't well. understand you outsiders. I'm quite happy and comfortable. The town takes good care of me. I mean, if you mistreated your slave, you'd just be wasting property, wouldn't you? <laughs> It'd be like not taking care of your sword or not giving your horse good care. Or I mean, obviously you take yeah, care of good yeah, care of those things. The appearance, except for to our swordsman, more important than the sword. Plus, nothing's worse than having not taking good care of your slaves. And I mean, to be fair, everything's more important than a horse. But ah, <laughs> uh, foreigner. Oh, part master anyway. But no, no, are there any other questions to... I can answer? You are all interrupted by the announcer. Now introducing the one, the only, Doctor. What? Sorry, he doesn't say doctor. I guess he went. He went on. Sorry, take two. Now introducing the one, the only. 
West the Wizard! And like the whole crowd erupts into cheers. Uh. Um, <laughs> um, one of the swordsmen, like a very drunk novice swordsman, like glares at you from across the table and like, be quiet. Um, be quiet. Um, but uh, yeah, the whole the whole bar is like erupted into cheers. Um, and um, stri- the there's a little space is made from from f- in front of the stage, and there a man in like a very striking like kind of purple suit, not like a bright purple, but, like a dark purple. Um, looking very stylish. He's got like a a black goatee, just very very nicely cut, slicked back hair. He's got like a cane and a top hat. Um, in his essence, he looks like the classic magician. And he uh, he steps up in front of the crowd and looks at all of them. It, it, his hair, although like kind of black and waxed, is is definitely kind of graying. Um, so he's a little older now. All of you have heard tales of the Empire, of the magics they wielded, and the things they were able to create and destroy. But all of that was lost when the Empire fell, when all of that turned to dust. Well, not quite all. Some of those magics have been preserved. Some of those dark arts have been brought back, have been held for long ages and centuries. And tonight, I will show you just a little bit of magic. The whole crowd goes, ah! <gasps> Even, you can see the slaves, like, kind of perching on the edges of the crowd, watching, watching, uh, the west of the wizard as he twirls his cane. Now, such things that you see tonight may shock you, may terrify you. But worry not, I am a man of mystery and means. And while you are with me, all are safe from the dark spirits that haunt the magical world. Now, and he he pulls something out of his sleeves and moved up to like a pretty girl in the audience. Pick a card. Any card. Um, she, she like, with great trepidation, picks one from the fan of cards. And he like shuffles the deck. Um... And now, of course, I've never met this woman before, and I, I could not have possibly seen what her <laughs> card was. You know, in fact, I'm going to take this card, deck of cards, and he puts it on the ground. And, um, do you mind if I borrow your oh, crossbow, young man? You know, there's, there's a hunter there, like, hands his crossbow. The guy takes the crossbow and shoots the deck of cards. The crossbow punctures through all the cards. Um, against, like, a table that he set down. Thank you, my fine sir. Hands the crossbow back. Now, of course, here we have the deck of cards, and he takes out the crossbow bolt, um, and holds the deck of cards up. But of course, with my powerful magic, I would never let the card of such beautiful young woman, the, the girl, like, blushes, be harmed by a simple crossbow bolt. No! Such a thing would not be able to, uh, not happen under my watch. And he fans through the deck of cards, and all of them have a hole, except for one, which he pulls out. Is this your card? And the whole bar goes crazy because, of course, it is in fact her card. Um, the way it bursts into laughter. It is the, um, yeah, the, the, he, he proceeds to do magic tricks. Uh, can I be can I be calling them out? Can I do insight to see if I can call them out? Um so so the call them out, like notice what he's gonna do. What do you mean? Basically just say what he does, what he did to like fool everybody after the trick. So that's yeah, so th- this is perfect. So Nimue starts to call out what what he's to do after the trick. So Mankar and Ashton, as you're watching Nimue with kind of glee in her in her eyes you know, start to point out the trick. You both look at Ori, who's barely keeping himself from, like, bursting into laughter. Um, and, as soon, and as soon as, like, as soon as Dr. West turns around, Ori disappears, like, go out of sight. And, Mankar, you can hear Ori, like, trying to leave the room so he doesn't, like, 
like just start dying of laughter at what Nimue has just started to do. Um, Dr. West turns around to Nimue. A skeptic, I see. You think oh, no, I'm not a skeptic. I, I fully believe in magic. Really? Well, we can put that belief to the test, Miss Nimue. Would you like a real... What, what would you suggest that I show with magic? You think these cheap tricks? I mean, they're not cheap. They're certainly cute. Oh, uh, really? What would you like me to do then? The bar hmm. goes like a little hostile towards you, like you're ruining the show. But Doctor oh West God. seems like very. It's coming amused. from the people who have slaves. For God's sakes, how did I end up being the bad guy? Uh, hmm. What 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 hmm. would really bring it out to you? What would really prove? I mean, I could I can pull you a can, scarf from okay. behind your ear. Okay. Tell me what the requirement is. What? Okay, I ask for any magic trick. Of course. His eyes are twinkling. Hmm. Use your magic to tell me what this box is thinking, and I put to point to Adithin's box, the D, 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 Diaz. <laughs> what that box is thinking? Well, I think that's a poor trick. Boxes don't really think now, do they? And the box starts to kind of laugh at you a little bit. Perhaps you've had too much to drink, my friend. Um, as he's looking at the box, he gets a strange look that passes over him for a second. Then he like shakes and kind of goes back to his stage performance. You ask what the boxes think. You don't ask for fire or lightning or something else. Oh, well, I already got the fire part down. The, the bar is definitely pretty hostile towards Nimue at this point. He's just like ruining the show. Um, doc, Doctor West gives I you a strange. What? I cover her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Doctor West gives you a strange look. Well, I suppose we could give a little sense into what someone is thinking. But why pick a box? What well, if you could sense a thought, you know why. You know why. We could pick someone else. And he snaps his fingers and the whole room changes and shifts. The walls fold back and the lights fade. The torches just snap out of existence. And as people turn to stone statues which just shrivel away. You are in a different realm. You're in a different place. And you're just where Nimue was. You just fade into this abstract group of thoughts. And suddenly you can see everything that was on Nimue's mind. All the audience have faded away. It's just all of you, Dr. West. And Nimue's thoughts spill out. The ring and the dragon and the memories. Your whole life. What you've seen from the moment you were born. Images kind of fading and changing and transfixing. Now these kind of abstract just illusions start fading back and forth as you see your childhood. You see the caves you've explored. You see Kieran. You see you talking with the priest. You see the dragon looking at you. The horde. The, the rose tower. All of these things you've encountered again and again. The ring keeps coming up. And in the end, those dragon eyes staring out of your thoughts. And then, bam! You're back in the room. And Dr. West is looking at you with, uh, with a little smile on, on his face. And the whole crowd is just like... They, they've just all frozen. Like, nothing else is moving. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, he he I, laughs at I, you in, like, a real good laugh. Like, just claps you on the back. Yeah. I think I like you. Play along as if I've shocked you, and then we'll finish the show and we'll talk afterwards. Oh, uh, of course. There we go. You ready? And I, like, just have, like, that scream face from the artwork. Three, oh, my God. Two, one. He snaps his fingers and everyone's moving again. Nimue faint. Nimue faints. <laughs> the whole crowd <laughs> goes crazy. And Dr. West looks around. Are you not entertained? And uh, can finishes his um his his um his thing with a with a, a great array. The, the, his big finale of, of pulling like a rabbit out of a hat and stuff. And everyone seems to enjoy it. They throw a couple colos into his big top hat. Um, 
after after um you know everyone's kind of cleared out and and it's all come down he he comes and sits at your table ori like crying from laughing reappears at the edge of the table you son of a bitch i can't believe you're too much i forgot that little thing you do what are you saying old friend just mind my, my little pastime um or it kind of turns the rest of you you might be surprised to know but uh dr west here has no sleight of hand skill at all he has this perverse sense of enjoying doing simple magic tricks with actual magic I don't know what he gets out of it, but <laughs> seeing him fool people with these ridiculous magic tricks is just, I don't know. There's something very ironic about it that I, I, I do enjoy very much. Um, Dr. West is just kind of this twinkle in his eyes. It's just this personal joke he just enjoys playing, doing like stupid little magic tricks. Like, you know, you have the little ball and you're moving it between the cups, but he has no sleight of hand. He's just doing it with actual magic. Um... <laughs> Well, now that I've played my little trick, it's good to meet you, although I believe I've seen a little more than I would have wished. I'm sorry. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell how much you know and, you know, see your entire well, life history. And... I am the one that asked you to read somebody's mind, so it's <laughs> partially my fault. I, well, it definitely is your fault, but I could not have done it. I just wanted to show off. Ah, Christopher West. Pleasure to meet you, name way. And your companions from reading your memories. Ashton, big boy, blue boy Ashton of the KK Paws. And, um, of course, oh my God. Jackie <laughs> and, uh, Mimsy. Lord Adelton from a noble family line, of course. Ori, an old friend, a new watchman. Look at you, the new blood on the block. It's good to have you. All right, mate. Good to have you with us. And, uh, Depth Graveler, no less. Hmm. Crikey. I quite I like your thought. people. And, uh, well, this is quite a little group and a, a bug man from the Expanse. Ivan is name. Very good, Ivan is name. Oh, well, quite interesting. Well, I believe I am to be of your assistance in the coming weeks. Seems like a good plan, mate. Well. You'll fit right in. Yes, this bizarre little circus you're gathering. Well, I'd be happy to travel with you. I've lived in Telus for a little bit now. Well, just resting for a bit before my next mission. But uh, I quite like it here, and I'm used to it. Um. Well, mate, we're going to a pretty crazy place. Mm. If you want to tag along, I'm sure your actual magic won't be unwelcome. Mm, very good. You're heading to Meridian. Yeah. Well, uh, we gotta stop by uh, the coast first. He pales a bit. Well, do you know there are real things in Meridian? It's not all folk tales and legends. Although I guess from your memories, that is, you already know some of that. Yeah. I'm some things don't Look, I'm not, die. I guess I'm not supposed to talk about it, I guess, but, uh... Yes. Not by the They name. do things with people, and then, uh... Yes. Yeah, but we we pretty much got one following us, so, uh... Hmm. Yeah, we already kind of bit the... Uh... Let's not sleep here, then. Let's... Well, I suppose we must sleep at some point, but let's move quickly as soon as dawn comes. Whatever is hunting right. us Sounds is not like going to stop at some, some watchman teleportation trick. We've got to make good time. I, uh... The next few weeks will be trying on us all. The things that are hunting you are going to want to get to you before you get to tell us. And we have a week or so of travel before we make it there. It will be very taxing. And we'll be under almost constant attack. I hope you Easy deal, mate. Let's get some horses. Let's get some horses. You know, well, I have a saying. I always like to hit things with a running start. And that is where we're going to end today's episode. Um, I think we'll call that episode Rune Guard. 
um, as a lot of it was spent with the Watchmen. It was kind of focused around them. Um, an interesting. So you said it was going to be the big one. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was more like transitory than I expected. This is like preparation for the big one, um, as this was like setting the the chessboard for what the next episode is, which is the journey to Talos, which I guess which the last few episodes have been, but this is like the final lap. And as Dr. West was saying, everything that has been pursuing you is going to be trying to get you at this point. Because once you get oh, to no. Talos, it'll be a bit of a different deal. Um, let's do post-session, then I'll let y'all get some rest. Because um, I'm sure everyone needs it. We're going to do a little, little switcheroo today. We're going to go top to bottom. Um, let's do your phrase of the session, the phrase that survives, that, that describes your general feeling of the session, one or two words. Um, Cameron, hit me. What? You said top to bottom. It's bottom to top, Sorry. I think, Nathan. Bottom to top. That's where it's switching. <laughs> All right. Mm, word or phrase of the session. Yeah, to off go the with... top of your head. Surprise teleportation. <laughs> <laughs> Brink. Abracadabra. Annalisa. Fox wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, bottom to top again. Um, moment of the session. I want to get my phrase. Um, I would say say stage setting. Like this is preparation for this this run to tell us and then like the final preparation of going to Meridian. Like the dungeon. Um and seeing the Katasi. Um or what's left of them. Uh I know I'm very excited for Meridian and I really hope you guys make it there. Uh Carrot will be interesting. But anyways, stage setting would be my phrase, but we'll do moments. Um, Cameron. Uh, when Ori chronoscopically one-shot nine people at once. <laughs> yeah, the Watchmen are so badass in this world. Like, I, I love them. So the fact that you guys are hanging with them is, is pretty sick. Brink. I know the the idea of a magician using actual <laughs> magic to make up for his lack of sleight of hands <laughs> is the most awesome thing I can think it's about. The so that's funniest, the funniest. It's like the stupidest. <laughs> God, I can like I can warp reality. What should I use it for? <laughs> I can I can do that card trick now. <laughs> I can totally. Doctor West's like childhood was him being totally shitty in sleight of hand. No, I and think the best part yeah. is. He's got like the magic for like illusions, and he's illusioning like this sleight of hand. Oh no, he's <laughs> not doing any illusions. He's all doing it for oh, okay. real. He's doing it with like teleportation stuff or however he's doing it, but it's all real. Like that card really wasn't damaged. You know. Oh okay, so he's using these astro magic thing that's <laughs> yeah. useful to society. <laughs> I love I love Dr. West. He is just one of the most fantastic characters. It just I love him as a concept. Annalisa. Uh meeting Ivan, I'd say. That was pretty pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Ivan just a total complete spur of the moment improv for this random character who just loves Ashton and thinks he's the strongest boy. Um Thank you. Yeah, cuz I mean in fairness, he's not wrong. <laughs> Um, what a little bizarre merry band you guys uh, you guys have gathered together. I love it. Um, I think, although I have a bunch of I, oh, a bunch of the moments I really enjoyed were listed. Um, I have to say I love the mural that just happened. I love that idea of this huge like picture drawn with calligraphy, um, where each like line in the drawing is like drawn with, like very tight fine wording. Um, that is telling a story as well as it's showing a story. But I also, I think the moment where I just dropped slavery on all of you was so good. <laughs> yeah, that was solid. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing you'll have to be dealing with as long as you're in the Telus region, um, which will be for a little bit. Yeah, I'm not uh. sure how I feel about that. It's, it's weird for them to enjoy it. Never in human history has, I believe, slaves have been enjoyed. I guarantee not all of them enjoy it. You've encountered one person who enjoys it, but... Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I have an interesting little bet with myself on whether or not Ashton will get a slave. Um, <laughs> and the question is, of what type or how many? Um, or, well, you know. it depends. Are we treating Ivan as already a slave? I don't. Ivan's definitely not a slave. Ivan's oh, his okay. own man. Ivan's I mean, he, like a like a pet, like a dog. I a mean, bit, like wow. a puppy. I was gonna <laughs> say, I was gonna say apprentice, but I guess I'll take dog. He's um, like a puppy. Like he's he's a he's a, a cute dog. Oh yeah, you know? like, yeah. I see the puppy dog. Want to keep him safe? Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah, I'll be very curious because I specifically timed it so that right before you guys leave Doro, you have to go to the slave auction is right on time there. So then, I mean, Ashton's morals will be tested. But, I mean, you can have slaves and not treat them badly, you know. I mean, I think sure. the first thing Chris do in season three last year was buy a slave. Yeah, but his then, club wasn't called KK Paws. KK Paws. <laughs> You were the one who made it sound like the KKK, so. <laughs> I mean, I didn't no, think I, about I, it I until said, I heard K. The, I said, until Colas, I... I said Col uh, Colas Calumet, whatever, that had a, Colas one of those Calumet. words was a C. Well, they're the Colas crew, but it's really cool. Be you know when they have, like, kids cuts? Like, the, the we have, a we have like, a haircutting store. And I don't know if it's still around, but it was when I was a kid called Kids Cuts. And the, the the cuts is with a K because it's cool. And there's like a Z there too. Um, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, so I figured that would be cool as a gang name. But I quickly realized it's a bad <laughs> but idea. But then you realize, wow, you're one, uh, yeah, one K away from disaster. Um, that's got to be the quote from of the session. Okay. Well, I'm really curious about what's going to happen next episode with your little gang of bizarre people. Um, but until then. Good night.